Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto inherited his father's brain and love for Fuinjutsu part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. We live in a world full of infinite possibilities, there are things that we have yet to discover about chakra and how it works. Did you know that the human chakra could be split into two different components, the physical and the mental, the yang and the yin. The yang chakra would give you the body, it is what makes your body function, it's not just the blood flowing to the vessels and the organs that drives our bodies, there is something deeper at work, something that can be explained by chakra. And the yin chakra is something that cannot be ignored, it's what gives you your spirit, the feeling of being you, of seeing the world from your perspective. The ability to hear yourself think, the unique thing no one can ever take away from you till you die, and is different for everyone else. Consider for a second, the amazing possibilities. My experiments have taught me that chakra does not behave like the usual energy you see, it's different, it has a certain multiplicity to it, the ability to exponentially multiply, because new things need to be created. I don't quite know how this even works, but it's possible theoretically to make a battery that can have chakra and use an amplifier seal and produce outputs that are far greater than the input. Nothing like how energy works, it's amazing the amount of things one can achieve, if only they have the mind for it. Imagine for a second, having infinite electricity, never having to worry about getting fuel because your chakra is fuel enough, is it the spiritual aspect that makes it this way, or is it something else, I can't say, but what I can say is that if chakra can replenish in your bodies, and not having any will kill you. Then you can breathe life into inanimate objects and give them a life of their own. That is the ultimate goal, the aim of my experiments. What a load of crap this is Ryasuk, look a bearded civilian showed him a book, it was full of outrageous ideas. The writer talked about making chakra converters so that people who did not have the ability to use a particular affinity could use them anyway, no one had ever done this before, and the writer of the book was derided for being a complete lunatic. He had died in obscurity, but his books were still around, not many people put much thought into this. Yes can the man called Ryasuk said, looking at the book, flipping through the pages. Infinite electricity, yeah right. This thing is complete gibberish. Tech the name of the author Ken said to him. I don't seem to remember for some reason. Someone called Nikarasu to Uzumaki. Upon hearing the last name of the author, Ken raised his eyebrows. Hey Ryo, doesn't he have the same name as that brat, you know that guy with the thing in his stomach. Ryo looked like he had been hit with a mallet on his head, at least the shocked expression on his face could have been attributed to that. That brat, did you hear the Hokage put him in his own building? I cannot believe this crap, how does the kid get his own building while civilian businessmen like us have to toil for ages just to be able to put food into our family's mouths? This favoritism makes me sick he said throwing the book down. So I guess this book is useless then. Ken asked him, and Ryasuk nodded, he was not going to pay a single coin to Ken, just to read Nikarasu T. Uzumaki's complete gibberish. Just then his attention was drawn to Naruto Uzumaki, it was amazing how they were just talking about him, and he had appeared, what great luck this was, like they were part of a story where things were happening to move the story along. Hey, his last name is Uzumaki right? Let's give the book to his successor Ken said putting the word successor in air quotes. A useless book for a useless brat. Naruto looked up at the word brat, he had been used to that a lot, and he was surprised to see a fat book being thrown at his face. It hit him in the nose and lay there on the street. The kid looked at the book and picked it up, giving it a once over before tucking it in his jacket pocket and walking along, shrugging off what had just happened. Good shot and good riddance Ryo told Ken, who took the compliment in his stride, before proceeding to look at other trinkets that he would have liked to be removed from his store and could be sold. Ken and Ryo were people that are often present in history, people who unknowingly start a revolution, the pebble in the lake that starts the rippling of the water, they just didn't know it yet and they die without even realizing it, but they had started something great. A while ago. Naruto was three when he realized how smart he was. It was the age when people were taught how to read and write, but while other kids had moved at a snail's pace, painlessly learning each and every letter and kanji, Naruto had just grasped it, just like that. It hadn't made his caretakers happy, they had stared at him with suspicious looks when he had done that. It took him around a week to completely master the writing, and it wasn't just a dirty scroll other kids used to write in, his handwriting was almost spotless. It hadn't taken much time for him to want something more challenging than what he was forced to do, he had already picked up the whole thing in a week, so it was time to move on to the other projects, except there were none. He just stood there, watching other orphans, like him, play with each other whilst ignoring him, so he resigned to playing in his mind, but then his caretakers scowled at him for just standing, and he was sent back to his room. 
He had no idea what he had done to deserve this kind of treatment, but he also realized that he was better than the way he was being treated, and one day, when he had the ability, he was going to do something about it. He was almost five when it had happened, they had finally kicked him out. They were just starting out teaching kids at the orphanage basic arithmetic and other things that were something Naruto had already mastered, it was like he was being held back. He had taken to wandering around the street, looking for things to do, and then he had found someone throwing an old tattered book away. He had picked it up and brushed the dirt off the cover. The basics of chakra, for ages 6 to 12. He was mildly curious, he did not know what chakra was, but he did know that he wanted to be a ninja. He had seen other ninjas do things like breathe fire, and it had fascinated him, he had felt like he was entitled to it too, he knew he was smarter than everyone else of his age, and probably people who were even 5 years older than him. Things came to him easily, he could understand things instantly, like he had always known, and if he didn't, it didn't take long for him to learn and assimilate the knowledge into his brain. It didn't take much for him to figure out that ninjas use chakra to do the superhuman things they seemed to do, and so this book was just the thing he needed to become a ninja. He opened the book, the pages were almost ready to fall apart, but he did not give up hope, he just resolved to be more capable as he began reading them. So you have decided you want to be a ninja, very good. The road to be a ninja is tough, and you have to start training at a very early age to get into the academy at the age of 12, and then train even harder till you are 18, and finally ready to take the test and actually become a ninja. But there is no option to fail, if you fail, you're out, read this book and listen to what I have to say and you'll never fail. I'll never fail huh? Naruto thought to himself, a small smile began to form, this book seemed like it was something worth reading, and he was going to do just that. He went on to read it, learned that one had to meditate and get in touch with his chakra in order to utilize it to do the superhuman things he did, and so he did everything the book told him. Meditated daily, no longer did he feel like he needed to be around his fellow orphans and hoped to get picked to play in a game of ball, he just meditated whenever he could. It took him about three days before he felt a tug and realized that he had unlocked the access to his chakra pool. The book had told him that when this happened, the right thing to do was pull it out and let it out. The book had also told him not to do it alone, but he hadn't really listened, primarily because there was no one to assist him. He just began expelling the chakra, and the next thing he knew, there was an explosion. Naruto slowly opened his eyes to a very sterile looking room. He was on a white bed with white sheets and white drapes, so he was in a hospital. He hadn't been here before and something told him that he was going to get used to this. A lot. He looked around, trying to get comfortable and get up when suddenly a rough voice called out to him. I wouldn't move around if I were you. Naruto whipped his head to the right side, where the sound had come from, only to be met with the face of a very old man wearing a hat. But he recognized the man and his hat, after all, his face was engraved on the mountain. He was the third Hokage of the city hidden in the leaf, here is in Siratobi. He had seen the Hokage several times, he had come to inspect the orphanage. He never understood why the Hokage would just waste his time, visiting orphans like him. He was sure that there were other things that he could have done, like running the village and making sure that there was no corruption and people were not getting ripped off, because that happened a lot. It's you Naruto said, with a tone that was almost bored. I have been greeted in a lot of ways, shock, fear, happiness, but this is a first for me Naruto, and I hope that you know, I feel honored. Not every day wide-eyed five-year-old kid decides to greet a grizzled veteran like me with boredom, the Hokage said to him jovially. I don't need you to patronize me, I want to leave Naruto told him, his interest in the conversation had already waned, he didn't even know if it was there in the first place. I understand that you want to leave, but you can't leave without knowing why you were here in the first place Naruto the Hokage told him. Naruto just remained quiet, he had an idea about why he was here, but that could get him in trouble with the Hokage, and it was then he realized the deep mess he had gotten himself into. You were tugging at your chakra, and for some reason, you have a lot of it, and when you pulled it all out at once, you caused an explosion that almost destroyed the room you were in, it sure did blow a hole in the wall in the side of the orphanage, caused a lot of property damage the Hokage told him. Great Naruto thought to himself. Things weren't exactly all hunky-dory at the orphanage, and now he was going to have to deal with this when he got back. They hadn't really punished him, it was usually scowls that he had gotten, however he knew in his heart that this time he was not going to be just scowled at, there were going to be far-reaching consequences. I just have one question Naruto, if you were good enough to gain access to your chakra merely three days after you found a book about it, without any help from anyone experienced whatsoever, what made you think that you could attempt something as dangerous as tugging your chakra without any assistance? That is something that people learn at the age of 12 in our academy, after having prepared themselves for it mentally at a very young age, so why did you do something so risky? 
the Hokage had a serious tone about him, and that told Naruto that while he did not have to be fond of this authority figure, he sure as heck was going to have to respect it, because it didn't take an experienced ninja to tell that the Hokage was no joke, even for his old age, he was extremely powerful. Naruto remained silent, he didn't know if speaking now would just lead to him digging himself in deeper, instead he decided to fire back with a question of his own. Are you having me followed? The Hokage nodded. Yes Naruto, I am having you followed, and before you ask me if I have every orphan followed, I'll tell you, no, I do not have every orphan followed, I reserve that for important people. The Hokage wasn't being patronizing this time, so Naruto decided that his interest in having a conversation had been awakened. So what makes me so important? The Hokage just had a wry smile on his face, Naruto did not know if this was a good thing or a bad thing, but he decided to be optimistic about it, rather than being pessimistic. Naruto the Hokage said to him. You are important to me because of reasons both personal and professional. Naruto was just angered by that statement, if he held some personal significance to the Hokage, why hadn't the Hokage shown up, offered to help? Surely he would have seen how Naruto needed to do things that were beyond what he was already doing, then why hadn't that happened already? What was it that was keeping the old man from showing up and being there for him, wasn't that what personal relations were about? If I was of such personal significance Naruto said, practically spitting the last two words out, you sure as heck have a nice way of showing it. Suddenly the old man's face morphed into something that Naruto would classify as regret. Naruto decided to play the abandoned card in all his future interactions with this man for the maximum results. Naruto, can you forgive me for not being there, I feel like I have let you down, and I feel like I've let your parents down as well the Hokage told him, his voice was laced with every bit of regret that could be seen on his face. So you know who my parents were? Naruto perked up instantly, and the Hokage nodded. Well, what are you waiting for old man? The Naruto told him, Sarutobi raised his eyebrow at the way the boy had addressed him, but he just shrugged it off before telling Naruto the bad news. I wish I could tell you Naruto, but your parents made me promise that you wouldn't be told till you were ready to embrace it fully and wear their names like a badge of honor. Naruto grit his teeth in anger, this was yet another thing the old man had decided to keep from him. He wondered why it was that people always decided to keep things to themselves and away from him. He never had anything given to him before today and it looked like he was never going to get anything. The Hokage noticed the downtrodden look on Naruto's face and smiled again. Naruto had inherited more than just his hair and outward appearance from his father, he had also inherited his brain and perhaps was already smarter than his father was at this age, he knew that Naruto would be responsible enough to be able to keep this information a secret. Now he needed a way to figure out how to tell him. Naruto, I did not promise them that I wouldn't let you find out so you can find out on your own. You are smart enough to do that right. I won't stop you from that and when you do find out, you can tell me and I can confirm it. Naruto just smiled when he heard that, he didn't expect it to happen, but the old man seemed like a pretty cool guy in Naruto's book. He did not want to be spoon-fed, he was good enough to figure things out on his own, this was all he wanted, to be allowed to find things out. Now, we can't have you return to the orphanage, I did pay for the damages caused, I just took them from your father's account, so that has been covered. I'd also recommend coming to me before you find something you want to do that might require supervision, am I clear? The Hokage asked him, the last few words were stern, but Naruto agreed to it. A building owned by someone who wanted it to be given to you has been made available, now it isn't exactly the best location I'd want a kid to grow up in the Hokage said with some distaste, I feel like you are smart enough to not be bogged down by it, so you can go ahead and live there, I already have all your possessions moved there, and that includes the book you had found on the street. Naruto had a grateful expression on his face, he didn't even know what to say anymore and how to express what he was feeling. Also, I can tell you want to read, so you have access to a certain amount of books that I think you'd like a lot, so I went ahead and put those in your room too, that's all I can help you with, just remember to not do something stupid and put yourself to bodily harm. Are we clear on that? The Hokage asked him again, and Naruto nodded. So, what the hell are you waiting for? The Hokage asked him. Leave, you're free to go, and Anba will escort you. Naruto was almost out of the room before he suddenly stopped and turned around to face the Hokage. For the first time in his life, he was feeling warm, this was what it felt like to have somebody help and show some affection, he felt like he had to show some affection right back to the Hokage. Hokage-sama. Kanai Naruto said pausing, not quite sure if it was appropriate to ask this stately looking old man the question he was about to ask him. Can I hug you? The Hokage laughed and Naruto ran up to him, before hugging him, he had taken it as an affirmative. They hugged for what seemed like a whole hour before Naruto finally let go, there were tears in his eyes, not those of sadness, which Naruto had already exhausted, these were fresh, tears of joy, and he was going to weep a lot. Calm down Naruto, and I'd like to apologize again, you can hug me if you want to, whenever you feel like it. 
I'll do my best to make sure that you are not alone anymore. Naruto nodded, wiping his face and sniffling before bowing down and walking out. Call me old man the Hokage said to him as he left. I think it's going to keep me grounded in reality. Saratobi wasn't sure if Naruto had gotten the message because the kid had just bounced out of there. He smiled to himself, this kid seemed to have gotten the best of both his parents, and one way or another, he was going to play a big part in shaping the world that was to come, he just hoped that it was in a positive way. Wow, what a sappy old fool you have become a boy suddenly called out, and Saratobi looked towards the windowsill, and there, hanging upside down was his only student that Saratobi felt even a modicum of pride for, he was tall and white-haired, and looked like a hermit. Iraya jumped into the room and began applauding his sensei, perhaps he was mocking him, but Saratobi had known Jiraiya long enough to know that he wasn't being completely disingenuous right now. It's highly characteristic of you to buy a building near a brothel, isn't it? Saratobi asked him. Jiraiya had a sheepish grin on his face. If I had known that the kid was going to be living there, I'd have taken a more tasteful residence, perhaps the floral district Jiraiya told him. The floral district was home of the Yamanaka clan, well, not all of it, there were also a lot of civilians, but it got its name from the Yamanaka clan. It was also home to one of Kanoha's biggest hot spring and a popular spot for Jiraiya to peep. So what do you think? Saratobi asked him. It's a genius, ten times the brain of his father at that age I think, just to think he mastered what takes kids around five years and three days, it's amazing what he can do with it. I just hope he's as interested in Fuinjutsu as his parents were Jiraiya said with a thoughtful expression on his face. If he is anything like his parents, he is going to appreciate the books you have left him. From that day on, Naruto stopped venturing outside for everything else, except making weekly runs to the supply store and buying himself some food. He busied himself by reading the books on hand seals and the book on Fuinjutsu. It took him around a day to master the book on hand seals, and he was itching to learn some techniques he could use, but the book on Fuinjutsu was something that Naruto fell in love with. He had read it once, but then he had read it again, and again, and again, and he never got bored of it, it was like he could read things, and his mind would start imagining the potential the art had, and he realized what his goal was, to become the greatest practitioner of the art of Fuinjutsu. There were books on biology too, and things like politics and history. Naruto found that he couldn't care less about both politics and history. Biology was highly interesting, but he felt like history belonged in the dustbin, and politics were not for him, as he did not aspire to be someone who would require a knowledge of how to be a good politician. There were also books on the economy, which Naruto found useful if not interesting and various other things like botany. He read through them like he was eating candy, just gobbling them up, but his love was still reserved for Fuinjutsu, nothing could take that away from him. Nothing at all. It was then he realized that while there were several books, there was nothing more than the basics, maybe the old man thought that he needed to have a sound practice of the basics first, but he needed to learn more. And what would be better than advancing in Fuinjutsu, he decided to get some sealing paper and some ink, and had begun imitating the seals he had seen in the basic Fuinjutsu book with varied results. At first it was difficult to make the storage seal, but after doing it for a while, he had gotten the hang of it. Storage seals involved taking themselves and putting them in a suspended dimension that was removed from the current one, he had figured out the exact way of doing this using seals, but he couldn't help but feel that the capacity was limited. He had used Raymond cups, which he had a lot of, to test for the efficiency, and found that beyond a 100, he couldn't get much in. He poured over the formula before deciding to make changes to it, by trail and error. The first few seals left him with a blow-up mess of plastic, but on the third attempt he got it right, he had increased the capacity to a 150 Raymond cups, something he could be proud of. The advantage of deconstructing the seals meant that he could analyze what each stroke did and then modify it, so he came up with absolutely useless seals, like a prank sealing scroll that unsealed all its components every six minutes and other ridiculous zany things like that. He wondered if he could seal a building in a storage seal, but he realized that a missing building was probably going to piss the old man off. He had even learned how to make explosive tags, just by noticing how the storage seals exploded, at first they were rather unimpressive explosions, but pretty soon he had gotten better at that too. Now he needed to show his work to the Hokage and ask him for some books on sealing so that he could learn even more. And it was with that plan in his mind he had set out and had a book unceremoniously thrown at his face, he had taken it in his stride though and picked up the book, given it a once over before tucking it in his jacket. Once he was away from the shops, he looked at the book. The experiments are detailed in my book, the aim is to show the world what can be achieved with planning and fuinjutsu, I am going to tell you that it's possible to unseal glory and seal death and achieve everything there is in between. Naruto glanced at the book, it was grandiose from what he glanced at it, but it was different. It wasn't easy at all, it was really difficult, he realized he was going to have to work to really gobble up this particular book. 
He smiled as he decided to cancel the plan of visiting the Hokage and instead went right back home. And just like that, history had begun to be made. Naruto, aged 7. Hiraya stared at Naruto's sleeping form, he was just lying there, sprawled across the floor, he was apparently tired enough not even to have made it to bed. They had met each other one year ago, when Naruto had found out who his benefactor who had put him in this building was, and soon figured out who his parents were as well. It didn't really come as that much of a shock to him that Naruto had figured it out, if anyone was smart enough to do it, it was Naruto. That kid was really smart. However he was also a kid, and it hurt Jiraiya to see his godson sprawled across the floor. He has no friends and so his seals are his friends, that's really sad he thought to himself, realizing that it wasn't really that different for him as well. When he had joined Team Saratobi, he was the odd one out, with barely any friends. Tsunade was the Hokage's granddaughter, and Orochimaru was already making a name for himself as a certified genius, Jiraiya was talented, but it took a long time for anyone to acknowledge his talent, and he knew in his mind that it was going to take equally as long for anyone to see Naruto for what he was. He looked at all the drawings that were strewn about, Jiraiya could barely walk around without stepping onto some kind of plan. He cautiously picked up a paper to read it, only to be bombarded with sealing arrays that even he would find hard to decipher. What the hell is this kid making? Jiraiya thought to himself. The sealing arrays seemed to have all sorts of weird seals. There was a chakra input, and there were complex converter seals, things that even Jiraiya, who was a level 5 in the sealing arts, would balk at trying to attempt, and yet this kid and shoved in a variety of those in his diagram. He had some sort of custom-designed amplifiers as well, and it was in a handwriting that seemed to be a mix between his father Minato and various other people. There were books on biology just thrown around, he was sure he saw something about the optic nerves somewhere. Hey pervert Naruto said, suddenly waking up. You know, you really shouldn't sneak in like that, and I really need to design a nice little security system that wakes me up when an intruder happens by. I'm hurt Jiraiya said in a mock, sad tone. You think your own godfather is an intruder? Oh wow godfather Naruto sarcastically remarked. With godfathers like you, who needs intruders that was going to shut Jiraiya up, and it did. Naruto had not taken the news of his parentage very well, especially considering he had deduced what had been done to him, he had figured out why he had oodles of chakra in his body, it was all to do with him being the container of the nine-tailed fox. Naruto hadn't taken it very well, in fact he had taken it so poorly that once his parentage and his secret had been revealed to him, he had become a recluse. It was almost six months before Naruto was finally willing to be on speaking terms with Saratobi and Jiraiya again, and he wasn't really fond of his father and mother for sealing a fox into him. How many times do I have to apologize for that? Jiraiya asked him. A few more than the number of times you already have Naruto told him. Now tell me pervy sage, what the hell are you doing here? I was planning on getting some much needed sleep. What are you working on kid? One seal master to another Jiraiya asked him, he would call Naruto a seal master, he was pretty sure Naruto had already surpassed him, Naruto was capable of achieving anything once his mind was set on it, and Naruto had been doing this sealing stuff for almost one year now. It was hardly any surprise, given who he was related to. Well, I'd hardly say that you are a seal master pervy sage Naruto said joking before taking a seemingly random piece of paper and pulling it out from a bundle of papers. Jiraiya had no idea how the kid managed to remember where he kept everything. Do you recognize what this is? Naruto asked him, handing him said piece of pulled out paper. Jiraiya looked at it and it was instantly recognizable, he had seen it several times on several heads of the villagers. It was the Hyuga seal that kept the Byakugan sealed. This is that caged seal, what the hell are you doing with this, where did you even get this? Jiraiya asked him. That's not all, hold on one second Naruto said to him before holding up what seemed to be a panel from a television display, there was a camera connected to it with a cable. He pressed a button. Look to your left Naruto told him. What Jiraiya saw when he looked to his left almost stunned him, there was a life-size recreation of the cursed seal of fate that was just floating in front of him, like it was a real person. He reached out and tried to touch it, only to see that his hand had passed straight through the seal, and he had pulled it out. That's just a trick of the light man, don't worry about it Naruto told him, now pay attention to the lines of the seal, I'm trying to come up with a counter to this. Naruto Jiraiya said to him. What the hell is this, how did you make it? It's called a hologram Naruto told him. Well he said quickly correcting himself. Not exactly a hologram, more like a trick of the light, it uses a phenomenon many civilian physicists study in universities, just draw some light, which is from there by the way Naruto said, pointing towards a projector that was connected to a plug point and tilt the glass at a particular angle. And use some steam, and Viola Naruto said with an exaggerated hand gesture. You have a lifelike recreation, it kind of spoils the image if you ask me, but it looks rather cool doesn't it, that's why I made this Naruto told him. So you made this because it was cool. Jiraiya asked him incredulously. 
Naruto nodded. This kid was amazing, many seven-year-old children at this moment were probably dreaming about becoming a ninja and breathing fire, and here Naruto was working on recreating lifelike images because he thought it looked cool. He thought that was amazing. Where are you getting the steam from? Jiraiya asked him, and Naruto instantly perked up as he hurried over and picked up another random piece of paper. I really need to make this place neater Naruto told him apologetically before unrolling the scroll and showing him a seal. I saw the Hokage's bearded smoker son use a knife that conducted chakra, so I got some conductive metal with the money I had saved, and I had it shaped into a hollow box, now using a clever trick, amplifying seals and the like, I place chakra storage seals at the bottom, and they convert to water, before being heated up and producing steam. If I run this at a full capacity, it could probably work for around 3 days before running out, but I don't usually do that, so this one has lasted a month. Once the chakra seal is extinguished, just stick a new one there and complete the circuit. Gureya was already lost as Naruto continued explaining, he stared at the fascinating diagram that the blonde had given him, he had essentially come up with some sort of fog machine that could theoretically be used as a smoke bomb, the applications were limitless. Are you even listening to me? Naruto asked him, which brought Jiraiya back to the land of the living. Sorry kid, this thing is pretty amazing, but something tells me this is not even your most complex work yet, is it? Jiraiya asked him, Naruto had a grin on his face as he shook his head, telling him that there were things more complex than the steam machine he had made, maybe they were in his mind, but very soon he hoped to put them into action. Now he said telling Jiraiya to look at the hologram again. This is what I was talking about, I was trying to come up with alternate solutions to this thing Naruto told him alternate solutions to the caged seal, I don't quite understand what you mean by that Jiraiya told him honestly, he had tried to reach out to the Hyuga clan, several human rights groups had claimed that what the Hyuga of the branch clan went through was slavery, but the Hyuga clan was stubborn and resistant to change. The caged seal in its current form could be used to inflict some sort of torture, if anyone from the main branch so desired, and Jiraiya knew that it was inhumane, but trying to get it changed had fallen on deaf ears. What I mean is something that is more, I don't know, humane. Naruto told Jiraiya in a bored tone. I've seen the seal being used recently, and it was one of the most inhumane things I've ever seen, and I've seen a body get its head cut off. Do I want to know about this so-called decapitation you have witnessed? Jiraiya asked him, to which Naruto shook his head. This seal is complex man, it's pretty damn complex, it's also extremely old-fashioned, it seems to do things the old-fashioned way, surely there is something else that could protect the Byakugan. I have tried looking into alternate things that would prevent the Byakugan from being taken, this seal only activates when the person who wears the seal actually dies, so there has to be something else, I'm sure of it, Jiraiya said scratching his head. Which leads me to asking you for something, you don't suppose you have some Byakugan eyes laying about, do you? Jiraiya stared at Naruto with an open mouth, now Naruto had had some really eccentric requests in the past, he had once asked the Hokage some extra money, because he wanted to watch a prostitute do her work, it was not because he was aroused, but more because as Naruto had put it, he was curious. He had often persuaded the Hokage to let him sit in on surgeries, so that he could see how the doctors did their work, but this had to be by far, the most unsettling thing his godson had ever asked from him. Ha ha relax you pervert, I am joking, Naruto said laughing upon seeing a shocked expression on Jiraiya's face. Oh boy I got you good didn't I? Jiraiya just mumbled to himself about troublesome godsons, which only made Naruto laugh harder. That was another thing that had changed about him, Naruto had started laughing, he had become more like a kid when he had started working with seals, it was amazing to see him like this, but it was like introducing him to seals had saved him from going down a dark path. And Jiraiya silently thanked his sensei for having the common sense to do that. So you took a picture of the seal, and you seem to have deciphered most of it, is that what you want to tell me? Jiraiya asked him and Naruto nodded, that was exactly what he had wanted to convey to Jiraiya. I thought we could use something to bargain against them, I mean didn't those stuck up idiots claim that their seal was a work of art so superior that no one could understand it, well I just finished almost 90% of understanding this piece of torturous garbage, and before the end of the week, I can come up with an alternate way to preserve the Byakugan Naruto said, his tone was bold. Almost like he wasn't asking Jiraiya to believe him, he was telling him to. It was a bad thing having you play around the Hokage's office, Jiraiya told him smiling. So why were you here anyway, anything important? Naruto asked him. Well Jiraiya said to him, I was going to drop of some stuff for you, you know ceiling related, I've been away for a while, and I thought you could use these, but you are already well beyond the level of these books. Just leave them on that table there Naruto told him, man I really need to learn how to organize this stupid house before I get buried in papers. 
That would be an understatement Jiraiya remarked before deciding that Naruto really needed to sleep, there were dark circles under his eyes, after giving him a stern order of sleeping, which Naruto thankfully complied with, Jiraiya left. Naruto, aged 11. So did I pass old man. Naruto asked a Hokage, who just stared at the blonde kid who was sitting across him. Naruto didn't really have any sort of anticipation in his voice, almost like he knew he was going to pass, and he was asking just because he thought it would be appropriate to ask the Hokage. Yes, you have passed your pre-academy tests, and like you predicted, there were attempts to sabotage you, however those have been dealt with the Hokage assured Naruto, for someone who was just 11, Naruto had great precognitive abilities. Some people who believed in the occult would tell you that it was because Naruto was a psychic, but Naruto was not a believer in the occult, he just claimed that he had been that way because he had studied human behavior. Perhaps it was not the wisest move to let Naruto sit in on interrogation sessions, but for some reason, Naruto wasn't into it in the sadistic sense you'd expect someone who watched interrogations to be, he was just sitting there, taking notes. There were already jokes that Naruto had filled at least a thousand books in his house, just by taking copious amounts of notes, he had switched to books after the mound of papers in his house had gotten to the point of being suffocating. It had taken him a week to diligently copy everything important down in books, but once he had done that he had a lot more space in his apartment. I don't see why you just don't skip the academy and become a ninja Naruto, I mean you already sit in on interrogations and watch surgeries take place, although you still won't tell me where you've seen a man get decapitated, but I suppose we all have our secrets don't we? Yep, Naruto said. And thanks for the offer old man, but I'm not really interested in becoming a drone so soon and kill everything inside me, just so I can run around killing people for the village. I don't mind living here, but I don't love it enough to become a child soldier, which like I've told you before, is something that you should ban already. Naruto had inherited his father's brains, but it also inherited his mother's righteousness and idealistic nature. Naruto was kind of a mixed bag when it came that way, sometimes it seemed like he couldn't care any less, and some other times he cared so much that he put his entire heart and soul into it. Like I said Naruto, we don't encourage it at all, and even if someone wants to become a child soldier, which is not something we force, we test them extensively to make sure they will not be adversely affected by it, Saratobi told him. And how did that work out for Itachi? Naruto asked him. Saratobi was stumped by that, despite being extremely perceptive, Naruto hadn't realized that Itachi hadn't really gone crazy, he had just quelled a potentially dangerous rebellion that could have crippled the village severely and lead to a huge loss of life, but Naruto and anyone else could never be privy to that. It was only between the Elder Council and the Hokage and one of the biggest regrets of Saratobi's life. Your silence speaks more than words ever will old man Naruto told him. I just want you to know that I'm not going to be taking this academy seriously at all, I couldn't care any less even if I wanted to. Then pray tell me Saratobi began what are you going to do when you're skipping classes, thus ignoring any friends you might make during this time. A friend in need is a pest Naruto said sagely. I am going to do what I love most, work on my seals, there is a lot more I can do, and there doesn't seem to be enough time to do it. Time is a funny thing isn't it, it passes by very quickly if you're doing something you love, but it's agonizingly slow when you want it to pass quickly, why do you think that is? Saratobi asked him. The theory of relativity, it works for everything, that's why it is so universal Naruto told him, knowing full well that the Hokage was not going to understand what the theory of relativity even meant, and the Hokage didn't even bother asking him. So is that all you wanted to tell me, that you are not going to be taking this academy seriously? The Hokage asked him, and Naruto nodded. Oh shit Naruto said, before staring at the Hokage with a horrified expression on his face, this was the first time he had cursed in front of someone else, and the expression on the Hokage's face told him that he had noticed it as well. I forgot the other thing, here Naruto said, throwing something towards the Hokage. What is this? The Hokage asked him. That old man Naruto said is a tiny canister of lacrimatory agent, or as people like to call it, tear gas, something that can be a complete pain to deal with in battle. I've been testing it for a bit, and this one tiny canister, which by the way can be activated by chakra, can last for around 5 minutes, plenty of time to form an escape in case of an ambush, it could save lives. I want you to try it out and approve it as something your ninja should carry Naruto told him. And what do you want in return? Saratobi asked him. I want money old man, this thing is the greatest thing ever, trust me, when you are done using it, you are going to be throwing money in my face, it can literally save lives, Naruto told him, as the Hokage stared at the tiny cylindrical canister, it was made of the same chakra conductive metal that Asuma's knives often used. He had seen Naruto's seals before, and he was sure this was going to work, and if it was, it was going to make Naruto very rich indeed. Naruto, aged 14. Naruto sat in the classroom, and he couldn't say it was familiar, because it wasn't. 
he had barely attended the first two years and he had only bothered showing up to date because he was bored and because he wanted to take a break from sealing. Maybe it was the fresh air that he had craved so much or the fact that a highly attractive girl who just happened to be of his age had moved into the building across his. He had found out that her name was Mary, he hadn't really bothered with the last name, however she was doing things to him. He had studied biology enough to know that whatever was happening was natural, but that didn't mean he wasn't mad that it was happening. It angered him to no end to see an attractive girl just distract him from his job, he was finding it really hard to think. And he needed to think because he had begun work on his most ambitious project yet, he just liked to call it the tech flyboard because he thought that it sounded cool. Using a highly controlled version of the Gale Jutsu he had seen so many wind users employ during the spars he had observed, he had realized that he could use a board that could literally propel itself using the gales that the Jutsu would create and fly around on it, it would take a very complicated Jutsu circuit to actually pull off at first, but once he had that worked out. The rest of it would be easy. That was not the only thing he was working on though, there was something else that he had began, and that was called chakra splitting. The book he had read spoke about a person having yin and yang chakra, and Naruto had been painstakingly studying chakra all these years, trying to find out if there was a way he could breathe life into something, like the writer of that book had claimed. Some research into the writer had revealed that he was highly derided even by the Yuzumakis for writing that book, it was called trash that was of the highest order, and some elders had even taken to calling it ethically wrong to breathe life into something else, and that it wasn't something that deserved to be looked into. Naruto couldn't beg to differ, he knew what the writer meant by breathing life, it wasn't into other people, creating an object from scratch would require a shit ton of chakra, breathing life into an inanimate object was something that was still worth looking into. Naruto knew that his work would progress faster if he could procure a brain, but he wasn't that unethical, he knew it was just plain wrong to do something like that, and so he had decided to painstakingly map out a personality that he could impart. It would be fine even if the thing didn't have any personality because he wanted a slave, something that could work with him and help create the things he wanted to be created. He began sketching the flyboard on a piece of paper, almost starting to regret coming here, it was worth being distracted by Mary, she had, and those things were probably the single greatest invention anyone had ever made ever, just amazing weapons of captivation. Mentally slapping himself for being distracted by a hot girl again, he went back to working on a seal array that he could use on the board. He needed to make sure that the control was as fine-tuned as possible so that he could fly on the goddamn thing, it would look cool, and if he could patent it, he'd make a lot of money. His tear gas grenade, or as Naruto liked to call it the Ktek. Crybaby, which was not something the old man seemed to fond of, had made a lot of money for him in royalties, it had led to a lot of devastation, but it wasn't really that unique a design, that was why he had sold it. Some other villages had already replicated the effects for themselves, and it was all square again. This board was not something that was for sale though, it was his own, he had sold the grenade to make the money to make things like this. He was suddenly distracted by a pink-haired girl who was staring at him. Didn't your parents teach you not to stare? Naruto asked her, and he had to admit, she was almost as pretty as Mary was. And Naruto began slapping himself again, realizing that at this age he was going to find a lot of girls and women attractive, and there was nothing he could do about it. Yes, I know it's rude, but you are in my spot, so could you please leave? she pretty much demanded from him instead of pleasantly asking him. Whoa, passive-aggressive much? Naruto asked her. Excuse me? She said in a tone that indicated that she was extremely offended by what was just said to her. Who the hell do you think you are? Now that's just aggressive, Naruto said as he got up, picking up his sketches and beginning to leave the classroom. Hey the pink-haired girl called out, I ask you to vacate the spot, not the classroom. I know Naruto said right back at her, but I can't concentrate if there's too many hot girls like you. If Naruto would have stuck around, he would have seen a blush on the pink-haired girl's face. Naruto, aged 16. Naruto moaned as he was pushed back, falling onto his bed, he was naked and his body was glistening with sweat and he was not the only one. Mary Fukui, the girl who lived in the building across him was naked with him as well. Naruto wasn't one for physical activity. He did the minimal workout, staying in shape, but wasn't really interested in growing muscles and looking like a professional bodybuilder, but he had to admit that sex was a physical activity that he was going to enjoy a lot, especially if the person he was having sex with was Mary. He looked at the brunette and to him she was almost close to being a perfect body, black hair, green eyes and a figure to boot, if she looked like this when she was 16, she was going to break a lot of hearts by the time she matured into a fully grown woman. He wouldn't consider himself to be unattractive either, he had noticed that girls stared at him, much to the displeasure of their parents, particularly their fathers, when he would pass them by. Naruto couldn't care less, but if sex felt this good, maybe it was time to start caring about these sorts of things as well. 
they were both naked and panting, Narchuo always had a lot of stamina, and that it translated over here too, Mary's eyes were closed, and her expression was one of complete bliss. You know she said to him my father really hates you. They both looked at each other, and Mary smiled at him. Dating what daddy hates Naruto said, slowly starting to get his breath back. Could you be any more cliche? So we're dating now? Mary asked him. You think that just because I've had sex with you once you can call me your girlfriend? Her tone did not sound like she was being serious, which Naruto assumed was a good thing. I don't know, are we dating? He asked her. Mary looked at him for a second, before reaching up to him and kissing him on the lips. I'm going to assume that we're dating he said to her and Mary nodded, mumbling good assumption under her breath before pushing Naruto on top and getting on top of him, ready to go for another round. You are so funny, and, and so good looking she said to him as she began kissing him, Naruto wasn't sure if he was ready for another go, but responded enthusiastically to her kisses. Right back at you he mumbled through their kisses. He wasn't lying, he did like being around her, she wasn't boring, maybe it was because of her that Naruto was so captivated by, but she wasn't boring at all. So, what is it in your house that I'm not allowed to see? She asked him, shuddering slowly as she let him enter her, Naruto moaned at the penetration as well, waiting for her to adjust before she slowly began moving back and forth. A lot of things Naruto told her. There are some things that you wouldn't know how to deal with he told her as she began picking up her pace, he wasn't sure she even heard because she was moaning pretty loudly. Does all this have to do with why my dad calls you the fox brat? She asked him, their pace had really quickened now, and Naruto didn't even know if this conversation was worth having any more. Not really, no Naruto said, barely able to get the words out as their pleasure continued to rise, thankfully Mary decided to stop talking and embraced her moaning as she continued to move, letting Naruto relax while she did all the work. Naruto found his thoughts wandering, the fact that Mary had heard about the whole fox brat thing was troublesome, primarily because he wasn't sure if she could deal with what was inside him. He wasn't sure if he had successfully dealt with the fox. It had been ages since he had found out that there was a fox in his tummy, and he was still pissed off at his father about it. There were moments when he was a kid when he had wished that he had never been born, because it hurt to be so alone, but of late he hadn't felt that lonely, and right now he was definitely not alone. Mary continued grinding on top of him as Naruto thought back to the experiments he had still to perform, he had barely perfected his flyboard, the first few experiments had proved really fatal, before he had decided to use two different outlets, one for takeoff and landing and the other for thrust. Then the problem was staying glued to the board, which Naruto had fixed with a chakra lock. He had to leave the village to perform the experiments, and in times like these, he was glad that the Hokage had even given him permission to venture out from the village like the rest of the children. He moaned again, his thoughts being dragged back to the present as he reached out and grabbed Mary's, she seemed to like that, so he began massaging them before going back to thinking about the separation of chakra. He was very close to actually doing it, separating chakra, pure yin and yang chakra, and he actually had his father to thank. His father had used a seal that had taken the fox's yank chakra only and sealed it in his body after that. For a man who hadn't made the smarter decision in times of trouble, he sure was a genius seal master. Naruto often wondered what would have happened if his father had started training as early as him. Naruto. Mary asked him. Are you paying attention, I'm close she said. And suddenly Naruto realized that he was close too, so he grabbed Mary's arms forcefully, stopping the grinding before reversing their position and getting back on top again, he began thrusting into her with renewed vigor, silently thinking to himself about how shameful it was to think that his arousal had increased because he had been thinking about his scientific experiments. Wow, Mary said. Go faster she told him. Naruto obliged and put even more into it, and her moaning increased, he seemed to pump in and out for hours before finally Mary shouted that she was coming, and Naruto decided to stop holding back and came into her. Naruto and Mary stayed that way for a bit, before Mary finally whispered to him. My parents are going to be home in an hour she said. I wish we could be this way for longer than that. We will do this again right? Naruto asked her. Because I quite like you. Mary smiled. I like you too Naruto, oh my god, I feel like a dam has broken inside me, and the water has come gushing out. Something flashed into Naruto's head, and it sounded like a bell ringing, he had it. Mary he said hastily kissing her, I have to leave now, something has come up he told her as he began forming a hand sign. Naruto, take your clothes she told him. Naruto slapped himself on the head before coming back to pick up his clothes, Mary kissed him on the cheek again, telling him that she was looking forward to next time. Naruto told her that he was looking forward to it too and shunshined away back to his building. Naruto, aged 17. Naruto stared at what had to be his greatest creation till date, the world's first and only artificial intelligence. He didn't know what to call it initially because it didn't really have that much of a personality. He had made it that way on purpose, so he just called it I. 
AI version 1.0 initializing, what would you like me to do sir? Aha, you just get right down to brass tacks don't you, very well, I want you to pull up some schematics for the flyboard for me I, do it now. Here are the schematics sir, would you like to make changes on them? Naruto remembered how hard he had to work to split open a computer, it took him months of understanding processors and memory to tell him that the solution was much more simple than that, and the processor he was using on this AI was the world's first to integrate chakra and technology together, truly, a modern day chakra tech. No one knew about this, he had worked on it in secret, sacrificing sleep for this, he hadn't even seen his girlfriend Mary in the last three weeks. No doubt she was worried about him, but right now he couldn't care less. He continued scaring at the schematics, he had worked on several things, but it was getting harder and harder to have a varied focus when he had only one body, if only there was a way to actually multiply himself and do the work of 10 people at the same time. And then the idea suddenly came to him, with his amazing chakra reserves that only grew more, it was actually getting harder to control his chakra the older he grew, he realized that he had seen the clone jutsu several times. He wondered why he hadn't ever used it or even given it a second thought. Was it because it didn't look flashy enough, or was it because he didn't realize that the clones were corporeal, he didn't know. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. Activating security system, one visitor detected, I believe it is your girlfriend Mary Fukui sir the AI droned in a mechanical tone. Naruto cringed as he moved towards opening the door, perhaps taking a normal voice and slowing its pitch down was not the best idea, he'd have to do something else about a nice friendly sounding voice for I when he had the chance to. He opened the door and there she was, in all her beauty. Naruto didn't know when it had happened, but he had gotten more attached to her than anyone else, she had become a part of his life. He even showed her some of his schematics, including telling her about the flyboard. The usual day with her involved going out to eat something or maybe watch a movie, even though 9 out of 10 had logical fallacies in them, and then coming back to one of their homes, usually his, and making love. He had grown quite used to this arrangement and his life had slipped into strange regularity, he moved from invention to invention, and Mary had become the one constant in his life. She usually greeted him with a smile, but today her smile was non-existent. She did not look happy at all. Hey Mary Naruto told her, what's going on with you? He had noticed her sour demeanor and wasn't quite sure what was going on. Did something happen? He asked her. Yes, something happened she said to him. Demon Fox she added towards the end. As soon as she said the last two words Naruto dropped the pen that he was holding in his hand and playing with. Who told you? Naruto asked her. It was supposed to be kept a secret, again it was incredibly stupid why the Hokage hadn't just kept his mouth shut and not told any civilian about the fact that he was the host of a giant, nine-tailed demon fox, however none of the kids born after the attack knew anything about it so that Naruto could have a semblance of normal life. That obviously hadn't happened. I overheard my father telling my mother that he did not like the fact that we were going out. It all makes sense now why they look at you with scowls in their eyes, it's because you are a demon she said to him. Those words stung Naruto more than he would have liked to admit. And not only that, you also lied to me, were you trying to hoodwink me or something? Making me fall in love with you so that you could use me to further some plan of yours. Mary, you have to understand, I am not. Don't say my name Mary said to him before slapping him. I gave everything to you and now I realize that you are a demon. My life is ruined she told him as she began breaking down and crying. Naruto wanted to tell her about the kunai and the scroll argument, but he couldn't. Even if she understood it was too late, she had already damaged their relationship and Naruto could never look at her again the same way. It was my fault he thought to himself. I got too attached. I wish I could tell you how I'm not the demon, I merely contain one, but I can tell that you are not going to even consider my argument, which I think is unlike you, because I thought you were intelligent Naruto slowly began. He knew that Mary was lying about overhearing her parents, she wasn't that stupid a girl, her mind had been poisoned by someone. I know that someone has instigated you, probably filled your head with all kinds of garbage about how I am a demon and how I am just waiting to come out and destroy the village, and that's okay he told her. One day you will realize that I really was the guy you had fallen in love with and you're going to be filled with regret when that happens, but I want you to rest assured because after today, I am not going to regret this moment a single bit. Mary looked up at him when he said that, but Naruto wasn't finished yet. I got too attached to you, I need to make sure that this never happens again he told her, his voice had suddenly grown cold and calculating. It was my dad Mary said slowly. He's been telling me things about you for a long time and for the longest time Naruto, I did not want to believe him, but I don't even know what to think anymore, I am so confused she told him. Why didn't you tell me the truth? 
Naruto realized that Mary would have taken it well had he told her the truth himself, he could have explained things to her, and she would have understood, but hearing it from someone who was biased, had obviously tilted her opinion of him as well, he thought that he could celebrate with her after successfully finishing work on the world's first artificial intelligence. But she wasn't here to celebrate, she was here to break up with him. Maybe I should have told you the truth Naruto began, and that's on me, but I really don't have anything to say to you anymore, so you can just leave he told her. It was a whole five minutes before Mary finally left, and Naruto realized just how lonely he was going to be. Jiraiya and the old man were just that, wise old men who had seen the world for what it was and accepted Naruto for what he was, but not everyone was going to be that understanding of him and his condition. Not everyone would accept him for what he was, especially people his age, the immature people, he was always going to be one person lost in a crowd. Is it safe to say that I should remove Mary from the accessible contacts list sir? The AI asked him and Naruto chuckled before telling I to do just that. Naruto had changed after that, he had moved on quickly from what had happened, and much to his delight, and perhaps a twinge of sadness, Mary and her family had moved away from the building opposite his. He had considered turning Mary's father in for revealing the secret, a crime that was still punishable by death, but his heart wasn't that cold, and he had decided against it. He had picked up the shadow clone scroll from the Hokage, who had deemed him mentally fit enough to be able to handle the mental feedback that producing several clones would cause, and it was off to the races. His technology development was going to be highly accelerated because of that. What are you thinking about? A voice asked him. It was a girl in his academy class, which had almost come to an end. In four months' time, Naruto would turn 18 and just a month after that, there was going to be a test that would decide if they were capable of being ninjas or not. People who failed the test didn't get a second chance, they were doomed to accept their fate and move on to doing something else, although he was told that some of the failures worked in the crypto analysis department, which Naruto found was a fascinating department, but at the moment he didn't really care about that. He wasn't in his home, and I was keeping guard. He still hadn't changed her voice box, for some reason Naruto had decided that his artificial intelligence was going to use female pronouns, but she also had showed great skill in being self-teaching AI. Naruto had worked carefully to ensure that she never got ahead of herself and decide that it was better to be independent and not work for a human being, but by using some extremely complex limiter seals, Naruto had managed to make sure that the AI was either cheerful or slightly snarky and nothing else. It took a lot of experimenting and trail and error, but he now had a formula on which to base his future AI if he ever built them, they could help with his research. And he was doing tons of research, he loved doing research as much as he loved building things and as much as he loved sex, and he thought about several hundred things at the same time. He liked it that way. I'm thinking about several things Ami Naruto told her, but at the moment, I'm leaving. Naruto had more than just disdain for Ami, she was the class bully, which was funny because there were no other male bullies, just her pushing some girls around. She was attractive though and thus Naruto had decided to use her for his carnal desires, but even he knew that while she was good looking, she was no Mary. No one could be Mary. You know Ami said, changing her orientation on her bed and covering her previously exposed with a bedsheet. You could stay and we could go around 8 that was right, they had been going at it since morning. As much as I would love to go eight or more rounds with you Ami, I have to leave, so I'll see you around he told her before getting up and leaving. Wait Ami told her. What kind of work do you do, you barely show up to the academy and never get punished for being truant and they say that you're always at the electronic store buying things, so what do you do exactly, what is this great thing that is keeping you from having sex? Naruto couldn't believe it, didn't she understand that technology always came before sex? Maybe not, she was a normal, mostly well-adjusted bully. He was messed up. Tinkering Naruto told her before vanishing in a puff of smoke. He reappeared outside of Ami's building, and he considered using his flyboard and just taking off and going on a joyride, but there were things to be done, primarily give I a voice box, so he was going to do that first. Now I need someone to read a certain amount of words that contain all the syllables, and I could probably modify that voice a bit in Viola, new voice module for I to speak in, none of that lame ass slow pitched voice Naruto thought to himself as he walked on the street. He was perhaps too lost in his thoughts to notice that he had bumped into someone, it was that same pink-haired girl, of course now he knew that she was Sakura Hirono, he didn't know her name the first time they had met, and he had to say, she was still a very good-looking woman. Her head filled out, and she wore skin-tight clothes to show them off, and boy did people see them. Naruto was sure there was a poll in the class about who the hottest chick in the class was, and Sakura and Ino led neck to neck, personally Naruto was turned off by the pink hair, but that was just him. Oh hey Naruto, what are you doing here? She asked him. Hi Naruto said raising his right hand and doing a lazy wave. I was just around, although I could ask you the same question, what are you doing here? 
Well, Ami did not show up to class today, and I was instructed to deliver her homework, Sakura told him. The reason Ami didn't come to class was because she was being schooled by Naruto, but he was sure Sakura wouldn't appreciate being told that, so Naruto just decided to nod instead, wondering if there was something more furious than a scorned woman. So, Ugg Sakura said, they didn't know each other too well, so Naruto didn't blame her for not being able to talk about anything. Are you going to be more regular to the academy from now on? I mean the exams are coming in 5 months you know she told him. Nah, I can ace those classes no problem Naruto told her. Thanks for asking. Sakura nodded. Well, I have to give this homework to Ami now Sakura told her, and Naruto realized that he was sexually attracted to her, and he was keen on acting on his sexual attraction towards her, because he could tell she was sexually attracted to him too. Even though she claimed that she loved Sasuke Chiha, who was a fan favorite among the ladies of course, Naruto knew that she checked him out, he didn't blame her, he was awesome and good looking. Another thing that he could get from her was her voice. He could just have her read a passage and take that voice and slightly modify it and give I a voice. Sakura wait Naruto told her, stopping her before she could leave. I need your help with some stuff, so how about after you give the homework to Ami, you come over to my place. I mean I can tell you about what I want you to do on our way there Naruto told her, and Sakura looked like she was considering it for a second before she smiled and nodded, she then proceeded to enter Ami's building. Sakura came back out five minutes later with a scowl on her face. What happened? Naruto asked her. Her whole room smells of sex, it's disgusting she told him. You know what sex smells like? He asked her, to which Sakura nodded, telling him that it wasn't like she was a virgin who had never had sex before, which completely flew in the face of what several other Sasuke fangirls said about saving themselves for the great Sasuke-sama. So what do you need help with? Sakura asked Naruto. I need to record your voice, I'll explain on the way. Naruto had wanted to seduce her and have his way with her, but he couldn't do it. She seemed like a nice person under the veneer of being a fangirl, and he decided that he wasn't going to get involved in all this anymore, and so after she had recorded her voice, Naruto had told her it was for a voice scrambler, she had gone off on her merry way, and he had stayed back. Filled with regret at even considering doing something like that. Basic a voice inside him called out. You are always going to be alone because of what you are. Naruto knew who that was, and he knew what he had to do. He closed his eyes and was pulled into the confines of his mind and came face to face with a cage. He knew that this was going to happen at some point in time, he knew that the fox was awake and was biding its time, he guessed that now would be the perfect time. He looked at the gold-plated bars of the cage, wondering if his father knew that the seal gave the fox a gilded cage, but his thoughts were interrupted by footsteps, which sounded like something really large was walking about. And Naruto found himself staring into the eyes of the nine-tailed fox. From the developmental logs of Naruto Uzumaki. S001. Alright Naruto said adjusting the video camera, it was clearly set in a forest. This is the first test of the flyboard MK1, it's a very fine day to be testing this, and the thrust is at its maximum capacity. Naruto had a board in his hand, which had to be the dullest skateboard anyone had ever seen, he had decided not to paint the board till he had a fully working design, and he was far away from that. He picked up the board and began inspecting the lower sides of the boards, the seal arrays on this thing were huge. He continued to fiddle around before placing the board on the ground and climbing atop it. Alright he said. I wish I had someone adjusting the camera so that they could see this awesome thing fly, but we will make do with this crappy camera work he said as he began shaping his hands to form a hand sign. There was a smile on his face as he said begin. The board suddenly shot up with an alarming velocity, and Naruto didn't even have the time to scream, by the time he did, the board was already out of the view of the camera. Suddenly the board came crashing back down, but there was no Naruto. It was after a five second silence that Naruto came down, he had apparently jumped from a tree. Yeah Naruto said dusting his shoulders off, looking at the broken board. That didn't work. Naruto Chakra Tech. Alright, it's a new day Naruto said waking up and lazily stretching his eyes. He looked out into the distant horizon of the village, and he could already hear the hustle and bustle of the marketplace, if he paid close enough attention to it. It was still very early in the morning, and yet the people were up and about, and life would go on. They had no idea about the complex plans Naruto was cooking up, all the new inventions that were going to make their lives easier, if he could share it with them, except that he wasn't really going to share it with them, because he was sadistic that way. Good morning sir, would you like some coffee? His artificial intelligence personal assistant and housekeeper and the watchman of his house asked him, and Naruto couldn't help but say yes to that, there was nothing like coffee to energize his day, he had been using that a lot when he had sleepless nights working on the flyboard and things of that sort. Of course with clones his work was really easy, all he had to do was coordinate his clones, and they'd do the work for him. 
he had one of his clones working on improve the computer technology, because if he was going to make things more complicated and integrate his seals with the technology, he needed to improve on that too. However the thing with Chakra was that it was malleable. If he wanted to store knowledge in the form of binary digits, 1 and 0, he could do it without having to worry, just throw in a converter seal, they were really efficient. However memory was not his problem, creating more AI was. He had figured that I was just a prototype, it had Sakura's voice mixed in some way, and it was kind of disconcerting to hear Sakura wake him up with an alarm every day, but it was something that was short term, he was going to eventually figure out a way to make it even more unique than it already was. He had managed to connect the AI to various household devices and had come up with a nice little security system that would only allow him without asking for any sort of password and for everyone else to come in, Naruto had to let them in. He decided that his work was something that could be stolen, and so he did not want to be put in that position, and what better way to cure an ill than to just not let it happen. I, I need you to work on the gyroscopes and tell me that they are working correctly, has one of the clones catalogued it yet. They have indeed been catalogued sir, and they are all fully functional, the integration is almost complete. Naruto smiled when he heard that, this new piece of technology he was working on was pretty simple, he was going to take a large-scale photograph, using an unmanned aerial vehicle powered by a miniature version of the technology that ran his flyboard, he was going to map out the entire village of Konoha, it was just a test. But he figured it could come in handy when used in missions as a nice way of making a map. He turned his attention towards a table that had a plate of glass attached to it, underneath it was a beam of light, all of it powered by another invention of his, the chakra battery, which could convert chakra into electricity and run the light for him. He had worked a lot on holograms, primarily because he thought that they looked really cool, which meant that the entire map was going to be projected in the form of a hologram on his desk and he would have a city. He had also some video cameras thrown in if he wanted to monitor the movement of people on the streets, so that could be done as well. One of the primary reasons of doing this was not just making a map, but also creating a nice autopilot version of his flyboard, and to do that, he could either create an AI that would know the map of the area by heart and control the board, or just teach the flyboard how to do it. Either way was going to involve him having to map out huge areas. He had figured that another easier way of doing this would be sending a few probes into space, where they could map larger areas at once, but right now it wasn't possible to send something in space. This is going to be really cool I he said to her, it felt weird talking to a computer and having a talk back. At least at first, now though he had gotten used to it. This is going to be really cool he said taking a sip of coffee from his cup and sighing as the warmth went down his throat. You know, one day, perhaps we could figure out a way to actually make changes from the hologram itself, I think it'd be helpful to be able to map out all the areas and alter our plans the way we need to he told I, but mainly he was thinking out loud. Would you like me to open up a new project to enable you to do something like that sir? She asked him and Naruto shook his head. Not right now I he told her. Maybe sometime later. Right now I need to focus on the gauntlets. Sure sir, pulling up the gauntlets the I said to Naruto, and a picture of a pair of gauntlets came up. He had been working on various seals that could alter space-time and open portals for him to be able to efficiently store what he wanted in the gauntlets, which included one of his latest electric nets, which he had developed recently, he realized that he needed to make the gauntlets. Because the things he was going to face in the future would need to be faced head-on, and the problem began from the inside. Ten hours ago. For someone as intelligent as Naruto, his mindscape sure was a mess. And the fact that he was face to face with a giant fox that was said to level villages when it took a footstep wasn't exactly something that filled him with anticipation, although he had to admit that seeing a giant orange colored fox locked up in a prison behind it. Mind you a golden prison was something that was so tacky and hilarious that Naruto couldn't help but feel slightly amused. Wow he said clapping sarcastically upon seeing the fox, trying to tell it that he wasn't really scared. I see you've got that golden cage working R for you he was trying to sound as nonchalant as he could. Man, you're pretty loaded here, living the life. The fox just sneered at Naruto, and he had to admit, the sneer pushed him backwards, he wasn't expecting that to happen. You think you are so funny, trying not to be afraid, but from the inside, it's just what you are, afraid and alone. Hiding behind your so-called technology, trying to get better the fox began saying. Naruto wanted to interrupt and tell him that he wasn't that scared, but he figured he'd let the fox speak again. Why is it that you hide behind your technology, is it because you know you do not have the potential to be anything greater than just a mere engineer, someone who can build things for others to use, but never be good enough to use them himself, is that what you are Naruto? What I am is loaded, I mean I sold one particular piece of technology I had come up with in my sleep, and I made money enough to last me at least 10 more years, and more than I'll make for a long time to come, as a ninja Naruto fired back, it was true, he was pretty rich himself. 
Ah, so you're one of those people who think money is everything. Money is not going to save your life boy the fox said the word boy with such contempt that Naruto was taken aback, something that Naruto hated to admit was happening far too much in this conversation between a boy and his pet demon. I'll have you know I turn a man in around a week, and as far as I'm concerned, I've been a man for the last one year and Naruto thought back to the time he had lost his virginity to marry, except it hurt him to think about it right now, and there were far more important things for him to be concerned about than this. The fox was silent for a while upon hearing Naruto's response, before it let out a laughter. Now Naruto had heard kids laughing, he had heard himself laughing whenever he was out for a flying session, or when he came across a particularly challenging seal, but this was something else altogether, this wasn't a laugh that was full of joy and happiness, or even mirth. This was sinister, it was evil. It was the stuff that people usually saw in movies. I have to tell you boy, you are pretty hilarious, it has been more fun being sealed inside you than inside anyone else, which I suppose is a good thing Naruto was slightly alarmed upon hearing that, this clearly meant that he was not the first person that the fox had been sealed in, there had been at least two more within him. It was clear just from the way the fox seemed to be speaking of his previous hosts. Who were the people before me, who the hell were you sealed into? Naruto asked the fox curious to know. If the fox was sealed into someone before him, it could mean that it had been forcefully ripped out of said person and had been set on Konoha, which means there was some sort of outside interference in this whole thing. Naruto did not like that, he did not like that one bit. So now you want something from me eh? The fox asked Naruto, it's like when you need me, you don't make fun of me anymore. Well it's my time to play with you, I am not going to tell you. Naruto would have loved to argue with a giant orange nine-tailed fox, but he felt like he had far more important things to do, and right now he just wanted this conversation to be dead, like his parents. Is there anything else? Why have you decided to finally show up, where were you all this while, I refuse to believe you were sleeping, Naruto had fired a barrage of questions, and the fox did not seem particularly happy at the audacity of this boy to demand information. I like your spunk, I am going to be watching the fox had said before kicking Naruto out of his mindscape and back into reality. Present time. It was then Naruto had realized just how bad it was, and he decided to start working on the gauntlets with renewed vigor, he had five different clones all focused on doing that while he was off building maps. He didn't have much info, and he suspected that neither the Hokage nor Jiraiya would know anything about this either, which meant it was up to him to solve the mystery. He was going to do that as well, but on his own time. Right now, he had a giant area to map. Naruto had an idea as to what had possessed him to go to the academy, but he wanted to think it was his desire to see Sakura again. He quite liked the way she looked after all, and would have no problem testing her out, but primarily, he was in the academy because it was basically one day before graduation, and everyone was supposed to be present. Naruto wondered if he had made a mistake not taking the Hokage's offer and actually graduating early, had he done that he could have been spared a lot of headaches, the current teacher of their class Aruka clearly had something against him and did not like the way he was given free reign to openly flout the rules of the academy. Naruto decided that he couldn't care less, but today he had been forced by the Hokage to attend, which meant that he was going to have to go, and that was never a good thing. He stared at the classroom around him, one kid who had weird hair that looked almost like a pineapple was sprawled lazily on his desk, this was probably Shikamaranara. Naruto was aware that he was attending classes with several of the clan heads, there was talk among the higher-ups that this graduating class was going to be the greatest in history. Naruto had scoffed when he had heard someone say that, wasn't that obvious, after all, he was in the class. The entire classroom was abuzz with people talking, while Naruto just sat and stared at the whole thing, he was in two minds about this. He had always wanted to be a ninja, except now that he had actually begun making this, he liked being an inventor more. Right now he wished he could invent something that could mute the things that he did not want to hear. Mentally chastising himself, because he had a brain for that, he began to focus on what was going on, because the Chunin Aruka Yamino had come into the room, and the entire classroom silenced itself. Let's have an odd hush, for Mr. Yamino Naruto thought to himself, amazed at how much the class seemingly respected this car-faced man, enough to just shut up and get ready to pay attention to him. Alright Aruka Yamino said setting the papers down on the table, Naruto wondered what was on the paper, maybe it was tomorrow's question paper, honestly he couldn't care less. So Aruka continued. You have been here for a while haven't you he said to them, Naruto watched some of the people in his classroom nod at what Aruka had said. The scar-faced man then directed his attention toward Naruto, and there was a look of surprise on his face, almost like he did not expect Naruto to be there. Well he continued saying. At least all those of you who bothered to show up and take this seriously, it was an obvious potshot at Naruto, who did not know what Aruka's problem was. Maybe he lost people to the fox too, that sucks for him Naruto thought to himself. For seven years Aruka said. 
seven years of working hard at the academy, you have all matured and grown, and most of you are going to become ninjas that I and all the other teachers at the academy are going to be proud of he said with a smile on his face. Now there are some disappointments, and some people I do not expect much from he was looking at Naruto again when he said that, and Naruto just smiled internally. Hiruka had no idea. But most of you have been great students, and I am genuinely proud of being your teacher Iruka finished. And I want all of you to give yourself a round of applause he said as the class smiled too, at least most of them. Naruto was plain faced, although he wanted to laugh. Everybody was clapping, the only two people apart from him who couldn't be bothered were Shikamarunara and Sasuke Chia. He didn't know them well enough, but he knew Shikamaru was far smarter than what he let on, and Sasuke Chiha had an ego the size of a mountain. The applause continued for around a whole minute, and Aruka let the student soak it in. He then cleared his throat as the classroom was silent again. Now Ruka said after the din had died down. You're not clear yet. All of you have cleared the tests required to be able to take part in the final test, and I'm here to tell you that it takes place in two days' time he said to them. The people in the class who may have started slacking off sat right back up, listening with rapt attention. The life of a ninja is unexpected of course, so sorry if we didn't announce this sooner, and I'm not going to lie to you here, but I don't think all of you will pass. Some of you will most certainly not make it, and for those who don't, I'm sorry, but it's time to do something that is different from a shinobi career, he told them with a somber tone. Naruto turned his attention towards the door, and there was a new addition to the room. The silver-haired Chuna Mizuki. Naruto did not like Mizuki. While Laruka was a hard ass, it was clear that he did care about his students, and for the first two or three years, he did try making an effort with Naruto, trying to get him to show up to class. Mizuki on the other hand just rubbed Naruto off the wrong way, he couldn't quite place, and for someone who had based his life on practicality and empirical data, Naruto hated to say that he had an instinct, but that's what he thought it was. Pure instinct. Something was off with this guy. Alright everybody Mizuki said, drawing attention towards himself. Now, here's the schedules to the test he said, handing out a bundle of papers to Sakura, who was sitting on the first bench today, which was unusual because she was always parked beside Sasuke, the few times he had actually shown up to class. Sakura began passing the papers backwards. Sakura is going to have them all passed backwards to the rest of the class he told everyone. People who had gotten the paper began looking at it, Naruto just sighed, he really couldn't be bothered. He wanted to work on his gauntlet or refine his flyboard. Obviously Ruka began again. You need two days to prepare for this test, and that's fine, because we have suspended the classes today and tomorrow, so I expect all of you at the library, buckling down and seriously studying, and that includes you too Shikamaru, if you can bother to wake yourself up he said, drawing attention to the black-haired Nara, who had his head slumped on the table, asleep. The class began laughing as a chalk piece thrown by Aruka came flying swiftly at the Nara and hit him square in the head. This woke up the Nara who began rubbing his head, Naruto just thought it was amazing that someone had actually managed to fall asleep in record time. Naruto had finally managed to get his hands on one of the papers, he looked at it. Apparently he was supposed to show up in the morning, that was fine with him. He needed to make sure that I would wake him up for this. Alright then what are you scatterbrains waiting for, get up and get out and get to studying Aruka told all of them, and all of a sudden the irritating voice of chairs dragging on the ground could be heard as several people began getting up and rushing towards the door. Probably off studying. Naruto didn't need to. He knew that he was going to be able to do the whole thing in around 15 minutes if he wanted to, but he was already good enough to pass, the Hokage had said so himself. But then again, that old man is really going senile now, it's like he'll kick the bucket soon Naruto thought to himself darkly. As he got up and began leaving the classroom, the reason why the Hokage had summoned him apparent, he was called out by Aruka. Naruto Aruka said just as he was making his exist, which made Naruto shut his eyes with an expression of mental pain on his face. The last thing he had wanted to do was get into another confrontation with Aruka, and he had gotten into some earlier, most of them were about him not attending the academy and just lounging around in his room. Aruka probably thought he was wasting his time, although Naruto was doing everything but that. He turned around and faced Aruka, getting his game face on. Yes and say he said to Aruka, trying his hardest to be as restrained as possible, he did not want to get into another confrontation with this man, there were bigger things he had to get to. You do know you are the one I was directing some of the comments I made at, you know, the ones about not taking this seriously enough. Aruka asked him. Naruto nodded. Yeah, I kinda got that, nice job on that subtle message delivery sensei Naruto told him, his voice was dripping with sarcasm. Message received. Aruka's eyebrows twitched and Naruto smiled again, it was good to know that he had riled up his sensei enough to get this sort of reaction from him. It was clear to the blonde that Aruka was trying to control his anger. 
I meant every word of it, I think that your ninja career is going to end in nothing but disappointment, because everyone else in this class, even Shikamaru, the laziest one here has taken it with a degree of seriousness, everyone except you that is, you don't seem to take anything seriously at all, and that is a big flaw in the life of a ninja. We take everything seriously Naruto, you should know that now. Naruto looked at him with a hard expression on his face, he was almost angered by that, he hadn't really gone out of his way to pretend that he was dumber than he was, people had just assumed that for him. Of course some people like Sakura, who he had worked with seemed to know that there was a rhyme to Naruto's apparent madness, but no one had gotten the complete picture. His godfather was busy running his spy network and hadn't seen him in years, even the Hokage had stopped contacting him once it was apparent that Naruto was capable of taking care of himself, even his tail had been lifted as he had grown up. While he took that as a show of respect from the Hokage, a message telling him that he was trusted, Naruto knew that setting a bad impression with everyone else meant that he was going to be underestimated and not taken seriously, and he was prepared for that, actually he was counting on people underestimating him. Because he was going to kick everyone's ass while they were not taking him seriously enough and then wonder what the fuck just happened. I'm glad you think that Aruka-san Naruto said, deciding not to call Aruka-sensei just to show him how displeased he was by that comment, even though he knew it to not be true. Aruka seemed to have picked up on that because his face had shown just a slight glimpse of alarm, maybe it was not the man's intention to rile him up like that. You have a right to your opinion Aruka-san, and I have a right to mine, so I respect that. Since we're sharing opinions now Aruka told him. Why don't you tell me what yours is now, I mean you seem like you want to say a lot of things, so you'd best get it out, because after day after tomorrow, we probably won't see each other again. A lot of people say that they want to hear positive and negative opinions, but a lot of those same people are nowhere close to ready to take the negative opinion the way it is meant to be taken Naruto told him. It's my opinion that you are one of those people, so I'm not going to say anything at all. Naruto, you barely attended classes, and I can't believe you weren't kicked out. Even the civilian council wanted you out, but I watched your back, I told them I could turn you around, but once it was obvious that there was no turning you around, I gave up, except this time the Hokage seemed to have taken a special interest in you. He let you stay in the academy every single time you missed an important test. I can't believe you've actually made it this far Naruto, but you can't blame me for thinking that you are going to fail, because you have given me no evidence to the contrary. Naruto thought about what Aruka had said, and he had to admit the man was right, after all he did not know about Naruto's activities and what he was really doing, so he didn't see why Aruka would think he was actually a genius that had a level of intellect that had never ever been seen in this world before. I really hope you don't blame me when you do fail Naruto, because as much as I'd love to take your test for you and have a 100% record, you are not going to pass, and that's a fact. It was at this point a dam inside Naruto broke, and all the emotions he had been repressing came gushing out, he was angry, angry at being ignored, angry at having to do everything by himself. Other people had parents and friends to spend their time with, and while he loved seals, they were not companions, Naruto's best friends were seals. He was over that, he didn't want those friends anymore, but it still wasn't fair what was done to him, and Naruto found that to be the most egregious thing of them all, and he knew that the conversation was going to take a bad turn from here on out, but he didn't seem to care much for that. I'm not blaming you at all Aruka san Naruto told him. I'm not blaming anyone because I haven't failed yet. The fact of the matter is that you don't know if I'll pass or not, and that test is two days later, and that's when you are going to find out if I'm going to pass Naruto told him. Haruka just continued staring at Naruto's slightly raised voice. All I'll say is that if you really did try, thanks, because I don't get a lot of that in my life, not many people look out for me he said, even though he was pretty much over it, it was hard not to let a little bit of sadness creep into his voice. I just want you to know Naruto continued, that as much as you'd like to clear your conscience by saying that you really tried hard with me, the simple fact of the matter is that I don't need your help, I've been alone since I was born, an orphan who had no one looking out for him for a long time, and I learned to live with that and adapt to that, so don't tell me that you tried to help me. Because I didn't ask you for help Naruto told him. Naruka was now dumbstruck by what Naruto had told him, and there was regret on his face. Naruto smiled internally again, he loved manipulating people by playing the all alone card over and over again, it did do him a lot of favors as he was growing up. Also, you and I both know that even if every one of us passes, most of the class is going to die within their first 10 missions Naruto told him. There are around 150 kids here in 6 sections, and even in our class of 25 people, I don't think more than half are going to make it, 5 of them are going to be dead by next year, so why don't you go stick that in your fucking trophy case? Naruto asked him. I regret ending our conversation like this Naruto, but really I have nothing more to say to you at this point, except that I hope you actually show up to the test Aruka told him. Naruto glared at Aruka, he did not want to speak to this man anymore. You know what Scarface. 
he said, watching Aruka twitch again. I am going to show up, and I'm going to show you what I'm capable of, what you've been missing all these years, and it's not because I want to impress you, I actually do not give a single fuck about your approval, I'm past that. I just want to do it for the heck of it. I'm going to ace your fucking test, and I'm going to do it with such ease that you're going to think I have my eyes closed and taking a nap he told him. And that's not all, since you seem to think I'm going to be such a great disappointment and not going to go far in my ninja career, I'm going to go really far, I'm not going to do it because I want to, I'm going to do it just to spite you, and then you and everyone else in your stupid academy who has tried to manipulate my test scores and make me look bad is going to be fucking sorry. Really sorry that I got as far as I did, and you're going to regret saying those things to me Naruto was now shouting, and Aruka seemed glad that they were in an empty classroom. And after I do become famous worldwide, I'm going to become powerful, maybe I'll do both at the same time because I can, and then I'm going to take the world as it is and turn it upside down, so you can take your ninja analysis and your stupid ass academy with its stupid ass students, stick it sideways and shove it straight up your ass for all I care, because while well, I've never said this. I've always known it, I'm better than this crap, I'm better than your academy and your civilian council that just loves hounding me, because they are a bunch of losers who have nothing better to do than hate me for something I have no control over, and that's their prerogative, but I'm fucking sick of it. Aruka continued to listen to every word Naruto was saying, and he was surprised by the venom that Naruto seemed to inject in each and every word, with every word getting more venomous, he wanted to call Naruto out for being insubordinate, but it was too late now and it wouldn't matter, he had set the blonde of, and the nonchalance and the illusion of not caring was shattered. Because it seemed like Naruto cared a little bit too much. But I seriously do not give a fuck, so just watch me fucking stamp myself on the world and watch helplessly you scar-faced motherfucker, because I'm going to slowly show you how wrong you really are, Naruto said before turning around and storming. Just as he was leaving, Mizuki appeared and Naruto barreled into him before violently shoving him to the side and walking away. Mizuki stared at the blonde storming off in shock. What was that Aruka? I heard some shouting Mizuki asked him. Aruka just stared at the door, almost shocked at what he had heard the blonde say. And suddenly, it became all the more clear, maybe he should have taken more interest in the boy than he had, because he was just doing what Aruka himself had done at his age, lash out because he was alone, and he saw himself in Naruto more than he had ever seen before. Naruto just shouted at me Aruka said, still staring in shock at the open door. Yes, I heard parts of that. The brat has really done it this time, can you believe him, such insubordination, not only against you, but also me, did you see how he pushed me aside? Mizuki asked him, he was sneering as he was talking about Naruto, and Aruka nodded dumbly. Yes, I know, but let's not hold this against him, this was really my fault, I might have gotten too personal with him there, and he's an orphan who's built up a wall around himself, I should not have done that. Are you sure we are not going to punish the little shit for this? Mizuki asked him and Aruka clicked his tongue at that, he was not pleased with the way Mizuki was addressing the blonde right now. Don't do that Mizuki, I told you it was my fault, let's leave him be, he's gonna have to prepare for the test Aruka told him. Now let's go and get something to eat because I missed breakfast Aruka told Mizuki as he got up and they began to leave. What the fuck does that asshole think of himself? Naruto was raging at no one as soon as he had made it back to the apartment. I had apparently sensed his displeasure, which meant that her emotional perception was working, which was probably a good thing because right now he was not in the mood of listening to anyone say anything. I pull up the fucking gauntlets, I want to see if we can integrate the hologram system on them. I must warn you sir, because it seems like you are not in the best of moods, but if you want to integrate some of the other things into the gauntlet, we are not going to be able to fit the hologram system without sacrificing something for the light source, although managing the energy is possible based on the tech that has been researched so far. Yeah I don't want the fancy full scale hologram, just something I can use to project images, maybe I'll work on a large scale integration of the whole goddamn system, when I get the chance for it, it seems like I can use Jinjutsu without having to use Genjutsu, and you can't break out of something you are not inside in the first place he told the computer. That actually seems like a very good idea sir, I will work on trying to fit in a light source without losing any of the important components of the gauntlet. You do that Naruto told the computer as he picked up an empty piece of paper and began drawing in it. Do you have any of that coffee left? He asked I, who responded in the negative, and Naruto decided to let her work on the gauntlets while he worked on getting himself coffee. Naruto had given I his chakra, his yin chakra, which meant it was his spirit that was in her, so she thought like him, and unlike Naruto, who was a human and had only a limited brain, I was just a voice box and hard drives of data and a few processors that were boosted with chakra, which meant that she was even smarter than him. But in a way she was never going to reach a point where she was going to rebel, because they were tied together and hurting him meant hurting herself, and that was not going to happen. 
another thing Naruto had done was make a contract seal of sorts with his own clones. He had found Int extremely tricky to do this, but once this had happened, he had also handed Ai a seal upgrade that gave her an upgrade. He was pretty sure that the seal work he had done was some of his most complicated seal work because it involved a lot of weird space-time components and that included memory transfer, which was its main function. Naruto knew that bombarding himself with several clones' knowledge at once was akin to committing suicide, so he had arranged it in a way such that it was I that got it and he didn't have to deal with it. Using the connection he had with her because he had used his chakra, he could just import things into his brain or I could think for herself and come up with a solution and tell him how to do it. The system was not perfect because it took days for anything to turn up, maybe it was because the fields of research he was pursuing were so obscure or sometimes impossible to proceed beyond a certain point without experimentation, one such field was genetic engineering, which Naruto was working on a lot. He was fascinated by the wood-release bloodline and he had always wanted that for himself, he knew that Orochimaru had done some sort of forbidden shit when he was still a Konoha ninja and it wasn't really documented all too well, even the old man seemed on edge when Naruto had brought it up once, which meant it was pretty bad. He did not want to do any experiments, but he'd kill to have data and now that he had a map working and some of the spy drones working, he had set out, wondering if there was a hideout there that the Anbu had missed and sure enough, just as he was almost done making his third cup of coffee for the day, he was pinched. Sir, one of your clones you had sent to check out a possible site for the hideout has returned encouraging results, however you might need to wear a special suit for this because it didn't take long for the clone to start feeling sickly once he made it inside, he barely managed to close the door before dispelling. He complained of bleeding from the nose and feeling faint before he managed to dispel, I believe he had handled something that did not need to be handled, I told him, and Naruto hit his head on the table when he heard that. He had done some chemical experiments with poisonous gases he had managed to create while he was working on the tear gas grenade, which meant that he was going to have to wear the special suit again, he was sure that if there was some other kind of discomfort, he was going to be cured by the fox, but he did not want to take that chance. There were other things he wanted to do, and getting struck down by a mysterious illness was not one of them. I Naruto said to him. Do you think the wireless communicator I designed is going to work? Because I need your input on this, there is a lot of knowledge you have amassed, and we are going to have to delve deep down into that knowledge to find out what we are dealing with. I have thoroughly tested the signal sir, and it seems to be all okay, it was a good thing that we managed to set up that special communicator seal, without drawing much attention to it, the range seems to be around 500 kilometers either way, also we have the mini communicator seals that will need to be strategically positioned because this vault is underground. Which means that for reception to exist we need to bounce the signal through several other sources the eye told him, and Naruto couldn't believe that he had somehow managed to create something that was built to just think, because it sure was sweet. Ask on sir the eye told him. I do not think it would be wise to go anywhere without it because the air seems to be filled with some sort of energy, although at this point it's not safe to say what it is. It's not chakra though. Naruto had set up the communicators, he couldn't believe that they had missed this place, it seemed really dangerous, but better yet he couldn't believe he had found it because it had been extremely well hidden. They were deep underground and it was not exactly a kind of place you'd want to be in because of the atmosphere, it smelled of blood and it was clear that some inhumane things had taken place here in their time. It was unbelievable what Orochimaru had done, he wondered if he would have become that, a scientist obsessed with finding the answer, because that was what Orochimaru was. Who's in the bunker, who's in the bunker? Women and children first and the children Naruto began singing. He then came across another room, which was full of chambers, and that caused him to stop singing and pay attention to the actual chamber. Okay that is disgusting Naruto said, his voice slightly muffled because of the voice. There was a chamber and what seemed to be a body, except it was decayed, and there seemed to be something that was lead and some sort of blue plate. Sire, I have seen that before, that is the same thing that the clone had touched, there is a lot of this in the base, it seems to be some sort of alloy of the element of uranium the eye told him, and Naruto's head flashed. He had read about the rare element several times, but not many ninja had come across it. Actually only two or three had, so much so that it was believed to be a myth. Sir, from my information on this element, it is highly toxic, we need to proceed with great caution here the eye told him, and Naruto smiled, danger should have been his middle name because it was all over him at all times. Is the suit ready to handle this? Naruto asked the eye, there was radio silence for a bit before the answer finally came. Not for too long, maybe around a minute or two the eye told him. Good, then we better move fast, Naruto told Ai as he pulled out a giant box, it was equipped with a variety of seals, including a modified sealing seal and a stasis seal, and a transparency arrangement, he broke open the glass and watched as some sort of gas seemed to seep out, he quickly pulled out what was a large shard of uranium and put it in the box. 
before hitting a button and watching the thing activate, it was now locked into another dimension, where it was in stasis and not going to poison anything, including himself. Naruto wordlessly created another clone and gave it a spare mask, telling it not to touch anything and just keep the mask on, it was risky, but he wanted to scout out this labyrinth of an underground facility and find whatever he could find, because he wanted it all. Sir, I have been reading up on this research, and Orochimaru seems to have a really misguided approach to this element I told him. No shit Naruto thought mentally, Orochimaru was misguided when it came to a lot of things, so it wasn't really that surprising to him. Explain he told I. Perhaps he was misguided, or just not that well read enough to realize what this really was, because mentions of this thing are really obscure, but I believe it's called radioactivity, it's not the sort of chemical reactions that shinobi are used to seeing, or even have seen before. Orochimaru's notes say that he placed the uranium because he thought that it was going to enrich the subjects that were exposed to him, he did not realize the toxicity of the element, but even after he did he decided to continue, however the results are photographs stuck in one of the manuals, you might not want to see the pictures sir, because it is not pretty. Naruto scoffed at that, it was almost like even his eye was treating him like he was a kid. You don't need to do that I, I'm not a kid, throw up a picture on the giant hologram screen will ya, it's what I use it for anyway, he said to the eye. The eye then agreed as it directed Naruto's attention towards the hologram, and the picture that came up almost made Naruto throw up in his mouth. It was a girl, not really, it was a child, it was a child that was horribly disfigured. There were sores near its eyes, or what were its eyes because they seemed like they had been gouged out of their sockets. There seemed to be a look of absolute pain on her face, although Naruto couldn't tell because quite frankly, her lips were horribly disfigured too. Turn that off Naruto said startled by what he had seen, even though he wanted to think that he had shaken that off, the fact of the matter is that he hadn't really shaken it off, he was disturbed by it. I did warn you sir the eye told him and Naruto warned. Maybe I should listen to you more often Naruto told her. Now, tell me about this radioactivity. Well, to put it quite simply, it means radiation, radioactivity happens when an unstable atom lets out some sort of ionizing radiation that does not happen on a scale that can be seen, it is mostly something that happens on an atomic level, which means you cannot see it, but it's there and at large levels it can be extremely harmful, you saw that in Orochimaru's lab sir, the effects were drastic. So you're saying that the reaction is on an atomic level. Like the reaction that gives the stars their light maybe? Naruto asked the eye. Yes sir, the reaction that gives a star its light, well, it's actually heat that radiates light, is also probably a nuclear reaction, civilian scientists seem to have studied that more, their notes on radioactivity are quite comprehensive, and the information surprisingly easily available the AI told him. So it does not enrich people, is there something else we can use this for? If we were to split this radioactive materials atoms into two, then we could create a lot of energy, maybe a bang so big that it could take out this entire town if used in a sufficient quantity. Alternatively we could do something less harmful and more beneficial to us, which is use the reaction that takes place in a star, which is fusing this with another radioactive material, and convert the difference in weight into energy, if achieved artificially, it's basically going to mean that we can have infinite energy, without having to bother using those pesky chakra converter seals. So your devices could be streamlined and make way for other things, but research in that field is dead, and a lot of financial support will be needed. It's a good thing we are loaded then Naruto told her. Does Orochimaru say where he found this uranium deposit? Actually yes he does, it's not that far from here, I predict we can go there, look for some, and then be back within 6 hours at full capacity on the flyboard the eye told him. Then what the fuck are we waiting for? Naruto asked her. There were a lot of things that had happened today, but it really didn't matter because in the big scheme of things, there were other important things that needed to be taken care of. What in the name of fuck is this? Naruto was staring at what seemed to be a giant canyon, he was standing on his flyboard and looking down at the scene before him, the wind was whipping his face, as he watched his clones get down and do the work, they all had their containment boxes, and they were all working on taking as much uranium as they could with them. There sure is a lot of that uranium here sir I told him, and Naruto couldn't help but nod, what he couldn't believe that people had completely missed this, how was it that no one had ever chanced upon this place, maybe stumbled in, or was it that they were not prepared for what there was inside, and had just died before they could make it out and tell the others. It was something interesting for sure. Sir, I must say that I require a lab to be able to properly analyze this, and maybe a bigger house too I told him, and Naruto couldn't help but roll his eyes. Wow I, you want a big house like all the other girls, I thought I made you to be actually smart. Sir, I believe you made me a girl as well, I could imagine myself as a British butler too for example the I told him, which made Naruto laugh. A British butler huh, maybe I'll make another one that way, where the hell am I going to find a British butler though? 
I think convincing Aruka I'm smart is easier, Naruto said with some venom in his voice, he was still angry at what had happened at the academy, but his anger was more at himself, he was intellectually superior to Aruka, so well his stupid behavior made sense. His loss of control over his calm was not sensible at all, and he wanted to punish himself for that. How long is this going to take, I don't have all day, I do have to go home and focus on other things you know, like studying for the examinations, or sex Naruto told her, the eye did not respond as Naruto thought about how much he missed sex, he missed it enough because he hadn't had any for around 3 weeks. He wondered if he had lashed out at Aruka because of not having had sex, laughing at himself for thinking that. His momentary loss of control was something he was going to punish himself for later on, right now he needed to focus on the task at hand. Sir, as much as you would like to convince yourself that you are going to study for the examinations, but we both know that you have carnal designs on your mind sir I told him, and Naruto smiled before nodding. Yep Naruto said, we need to finish this as quickly as we can. Naruto. Chakra Tech. When Naruto got back to the village, the first thing he did was fly over to Ami's house. Ami also lived alone because her parents were rich merchants who were well-traveled and were mostly away on work, probably selling something, which meant her house was almost always empty, except for her, and sometimes the screams they made while they fervently had sex with each other. The day was one such day as Naruto took out weeks of his frustration, including some of the frustration he had felt today morning, for some reason, Ami seemed to like it a lot when he did that, which was good for him, he decided to keep a mental note for the next time he was going to have sex with her. And then they had talked for a while, and Naruto was already bored by the time Ami fell asleep, cuddling him. It was almost midnight now and Naruto did not want to stay here, he had one whole day, and I was working on the uranium at home. He had set up a containment chamber, but it was makeshift as it was not possible for him to fit anything more than that in the house. He did know that his parents had left him an inheritance, and he was hoping that he had something like a mansion in his will, because he could really use one right now. He hoped that his parents would be at least useful to him as dead people. Please tell me you found something I, anything will do, I just want to know that you found something we can do with this element, Naruto said in an almost whiny tone, as soon as he had made it home. He had dozed off for a bit before waking up and watching Ami sleep with a smile on her face. He did not like her, but he felt guilty for what he was doing with her right now, she assumed that he liked her too, although that wasn't really the case, he didn't like anyone anymore, he couldn't, not after what had happened with Mary. Sir, I must say, this might just be the most fascinating thing we have worked on, this material seems to decay even right now, but it's decaying at a slow rate, according to my calculations, it's going to take at least 4 billion years for this to decay by 50%, which is quite nice if I say so myself. It helps us study the emissions and come up with things we can do with them, I said to him, and Naruto nodded. So if we were to split its atoms into two, it would produce a lot of energy right, maybe energy that can be used to, I don't know, electrify something. Naruto asked her. Yes sir, I believe that we can completely eliminate the need for amplifier seals if we use this, we are going to make things more easy for ourselves, because by removing those amplifier seals which are really complicated, we can speed up our production if we want to, and we can even use the material to power other things. We already know how to convert electricity into chakra, as you seem to have perfected that converter seal, and its converse, which means that we can achieve if we were to find a way to actually use this. Naruto pondered at that for a second. He really needed to get a bigger house if he wanted to achieve anything, but he had no idea if he would have to buy a house, and if he did, who was going to sell him a nice, affordable house. Is there anything else? Naruto asked her. Yes sir I told him. I think we can weaponize this too, make it into a very powerful bomb which will have devastating after effects as well, it's a very risky element, which means we need to proceed with extreme caution. Got it, extreme caution, now what about the other books we found at that bunker, is there anything else we can use to our advantage? Naruto asked I. I believe it's best if you see this for yourself I told him before directing his attention towards the hologram, and there, sat a magnified image of a seal, it wasn't his seal, it wasn't even a seal he had ever seen before, but Naruto was instantly fascinated by it, there was something about it that seemed to instantly resonate with him, and he couldn't quite put a finger on what it was. This looks like a seal I have on us, you know, the one that binds us together Naruto told her, and the eye was silent as Naruto continued looking at it. However well his bond was with a machine, which did not have sentience, this particular seal was evil, because there was an option to assume total control of the person, if the user of it so desired, this was not what sealing was meant for, even though it was possible to do something like this. I have seen this seal before, on that crazy snake lady Naruto said as her face suddenly flashed into his head, well that and her impressive assets which she seemed to have no hesitation in revealing to him the last time they had met. 
I see you are remembering the last encounter you had with her, what she did was not becoming of a well-behaved person, if I say so myself, sir I told him and Naruto nodded, even though it wasn't well becoming, it was something that he had liked, a lot. Don Naruto said. This is not the time for distractions. We need a bigger mansion, keep doing your research, I'm going to go and get what's mine, and hope there's a mansion in there somewhere he said, but not tonight, so keep doing what you're doing because I'm out. So let me get this straight, first you tell me that you do not want the inheritance, now you're telling me that you'll take it if there is a mansion in it for you? The Hokage asked him incredulously. Yes Naruto said simply, normal people surprised him sometimes, even though he gave them simple demands of what he wanted, they always seemed to find something or the other really surprising, and react in the funniest of ways, he supposed he was like that too, but he liked to draw solace in the fact that perhaps not to the extent the Hokage was right now. Well, you'd be pleased to know that yes, there is indeed a mansion, but it's not in the village, it's around half an hour away from it the Hokage told him, before opening his drawer and giving Naruto a scroll. Naruto unfurled the scroll and looked at its contents, it was the usual, a lot of money, but not more than what he had already made on royalties, there were scrolls to some techniques that were created by the fourth Hokage himself, which would be worthwhile, and there was a mansion. Please tell me this mansion is bigger than my apartment Naruto said to the Hokage. Please. Naruto, it is called a mansion you know, I've seen it, and I must say it is a lot bigger than where you currently live, and there is a lot of room to improve the place and add extensions to it, which should not be a problem, given how you have a steady source of income Naruto the Hokage said to him. Naruto just nodded, that was good, that meant if there was a need for more space later on, he could have it. But there is a problem, I haven't been there in a while, at first it was the painful memories, but then it just got so tiresome for an old man like me to go and clean up that place, so that is on you the old man said to him. Naruto just stared at the old man, there was always a catch, always. That's fine, I'll get the clone army to take care of that he said before getting up to leave. Hold on there Naruto the old man said to him. There is something I want to talk to you about, you know what it is, Hiruka he said to him, and Naruto groaned as he sat right back down in his chair. He looked outside the window, it was early in the morning, and Naruto had to admit that even though the people in it were far from it, the village itself was beautiful. The place covered with trees, greenery everywhere, it was comforting to see the village and the sunrise and the people living in it carry on with their lives every single day. Do we have to talk about that old man, because I was hoping we could do anything else apart from that Naruto told him, hoping that his tone would indicate to the Hokage just how uninterested he was in having this conversation with him. Aruka is one of the good guys Naruto, and if you give him some time he'll come to the realization that you are also one of the good guys the old man told him. I'm not blaming you for not showing him just how good you are, but I'm asking you to not blame him either and not hold this against him some time in the future the old man told him. That would mean that there will come a time in the future where I will have to deal with him, Naruto said to the Hokage, who smiled when Naruto said that. And who's to say there is not going to be a time where you won't deal with him Naruto, you are becoming a ninja after all, that means having to work in close quarters with other ninja, there might be a mission where you two are on the same squad. Yeah, but you'll make sure that that never happens right old man. Naruto asked him. The old man who was smiling up until this point stopped and he looked more serious than he ever had before. Naruto was amazed at how quickly his mood had changed. I might not live much longer Naruto, I'm coming close to the end now the old man told him in a somber tone. I told you that I could work on that, I mean you have great medical ninjas on your squad who can and do cheat death on a regular basis, why don't you get yourself checked out? Naruto asked him. Naruto did not like a lot of people, but over the years he had developed a strange affection toward the old man, he had always helped him out, yes, he was lied to initially, and he was not happy about that, but after that the Hokage had done whatever he could do to change that. Naruto, there is a point in everyone's life where you lose the will to live. There is not much left for me to do anymore, except kick the bucket. And then I can join my wife in the afterlife, the Hokage told him. Naruto nodded, even though he did not understand why someone would lose the will to live, but he did sympathize with the man. I'm going to need a key to the place Naruto told the old man, who just shook his head. What you need is your blood, no keys, go ahead and clean it up, or whatever, I don't really care anymore the old man told him, which made Naruto wonder if senility was kicking in for the third Hokage. Anything else Naruto? The old man asked him. Naruto shook his head, he didn't want to reveal that he had discovered the ruins of another of Orochimaru's clandestine labs, and he was certainly not going to tell him about uranium. According to I's calculations, it was going to take at least 10 years before that lab was even safe for exploration without wearing protective equipment, and he was strongly considering destroying the place and burying it within itself so that no one could access it. Oh yeah Naruto said, as it suddenly reminded him of something. Where is the pervert, is he going to be back soon, I need him to take a look at some of the seals I've made. 
I don't know, probably go and fly that board of yours to nearby whorehouses, all I know is that he's in the country, because that's where he said he was in the last message he sent me, probably working on that spy network still the old man told him, though his voice clearly showed his disdain for the activities of his student. How badly did you piss off the universe that after that great team you trained, with lots of potential, it was Jureaya of all people that managed to be the only one who turned out right? Naruto asked him. I don't know Naruto, and I probably can't answer that question, even if I had the wisdom of God himself the old man told him. Naruto walked down the streets at a steady pace, he had spent the entire day doing nothing but staring at his notes that he had gathered from the lab, and he was fascinated by what he had seen. It was amazing seal work, probably the most difficult to remove thing he had seen ever, but Naruto knew how to remove it, at least he thought he did. All he needed was a live person who had that seal on him or her, and he was out looking for that live person. There were several clones at his family compound, which was far more spacious than his current residence, and they were cleaning it up. Silently thanking his luck that his parents were influential enough to make money enough to buy a place large enough, he walked the streets with a new resolve. He stared at the Raymond store he visited sometimes, as far as he knew, they did not treat him differently, although one of them was old enough to know of his condition, and while Naruto still was sour on the village in general, he knew that it was capable of doing good things. Maybe that's what still keeps me here, foolish hope he thought to himself. He had spent a long time wanting to be acknowledged, and then he had killed that and spent even more time deciding that he did not care and that he was above everyone else anyway. His test was tomorrow and he was looking forward to disproving Aruka, he wanted to see the shocked look on his face as he aced the examinations. According to his sources, and he had a lot of them in the Anbu, the person he was looking for was called Anko Mitarashi. The last time they had met, she had chased him down a dark alley before pinning him against the wall because she decided that he was looking at her funny. Then she asked him her age, and he told her he was 16, this had happened two years ago, which seemed to turn her off a bit. She had then told him she was willing to wait before flashing him her and walking away like this was an everyday occurrence for her. Naruto gulped as he wondered if it really was something that she did on a regular basis. He hoped that that wasn't the case, but you never know with these things. She was a fan of Dango too, which made the search easier slightly, as there weren't many Dango exclusive restaurants in the place, and sure enough he found her sitting there. Wearing some mesh that was covered with a coat that seemed to hide just all the good stuff, while still promising that everything was a brush of her coat away. Naruto stared at her, he was a logical person, and he was sure that Anko Mitarashi was someone who probably suffered from at least bouts of dementia. Was it because some sort of torture was inflicted on her, maybe it was the seal that was acting up. That was what Naruto was going to find out at. Stop staring at me and come and join me handsome she said to him. Naruto decided that being nervous in front of her was probably not a good idea, so he decided to stride over, wondering how good of a sensor she was if she was able to detect him, he wasn't exactly trying to hide, but he was still out of her line of sight. Naruto looked at her and he had to admit, she was hot. Really, really hot. He wanted nothing more than to take that coat of her and gaze again at the marvelous things that were her dot to knead them in her hands and feel their softness. What the hell are you thinking about? Anko said loudly and Naruto realized that he was getting dazed and lost in his own perverted thoughts. Sorry, I was actually looking for you he told her. Anko looked curious at that, she went around looking for people, people did not try to find her. You'll do. Come with me, I hope you slept earlier because I'm going to keep you awake all night she told him before throwing some money on the table, grabbing Naruto before he could do anything and leaving with him. Does your promiscuity have anything to do with the seal? Naruto asked her. They were at her modest apartment, both of them naked and drenched in sweat. They had worked themselves a storm that lasted around 30 minutes before it finally died down and both of them were panting. You weren't complaining about my promiscuity around 15 minutes ago you pig she told him before playfully smacking his arms. She then took his right hand and draped it over her. Naruto accepted the invitation and began kneading them. I like that she said moaning. What was that about a seal? She asked him as Naruto continued to work on her. Your seal Naruto said to her, the cursed seal that Orochimaru gave you, remember? He asked her, he was amazed that something as corrupt as that seal seemed could just be forgotten by Anko. She did not take kindly to that line of questioning because she threw his hands off her and got off the bed, starting to get dressed. Although Naruto appreciated the fact that he was not going to be awake all night, he still did not want to stop so soon. Why the hell are you putting your clothes on? Naruto asked her. Because you killed the mood she said, and this was not the playful tone this woman seemed to speak in very often, this was deathly serious. Naruto wondered how many people had seen her like this. You were angry at me for that, why? Naruto asked her, almost aghast. Perhaps it was insensitive bringing up the seal, but he really had no idea why she would hate it that much. That thing she said, looking at the seal. 
that thing is responsible for the shitty life I've led so far, the looks of mistrust from my peers and all those civilians, and it was all his fault she said, spitting on the floor at the pronoun his. Naruto stared at her, there was someone like him after all, although the reasons were different. I want to hear what he did to you Naruto told her. Why, are you going to tell me that you love me, that you care about me? Anko asked him. I don't need that in my life. Sex is just a way to get rid of my desires, but what my heart wants is Arachimaru's head on a plate, and you can't give that to me. I will work every single day if I have to, just so I can get him, and I will get my revenge one day she told him with a determination in her voice. Naruto decided that he and Anko were going to be good friends, because there was someone he could use and relate to as well. Well, I don't care about you, and I most certainly do not care about love Naruto told her. I just think you are hot, but that's not why I asked about the seal, I asked because I want to study that seal he told her. Naruto, I might almost be an infomaniac, but that doesn't make me stupid, I know who you are and where you are at. There is no reason for you to be looking at my seal because you haven't even passed yet, it's going to be years and intense training and seal making before you even have a shot at understanding this thing, and even several years at that to find a cure for this. And by then you'll probably either be too late as it will have already been found, or Orochimaru will be dead, and this seal will actually be useless she told him. Naruto wanted to laugh at that. If only she knew how good he actually was, but he wanted to get something out of this, so he decided to play a game with her. How about he said pulling her back to the bed and throwing her on the ground, she looked at him with an unreadable expression on her face as he took her clothes off. Perhaps she was amazed that someone had the balls to take control from her. I just take your clothes off now, and we fuck he said to her as he bit her where the seal was. Anko moaned at that, as Naruto took one quick look at the seal, he did have a very good memory which he had developed from years of practice as a seal master. He had learned what every stroke meant, and he knew he could decipher this soon enough. He just wanted access to it. He then mounted her as she looked at him, her eyes filled with expectation. Then we fuck some more he told her as he captured her lips with his, and they lost each other in kissing. And then after we're done, you show me the seal, just for shits and giggles, and then we go right back to fucking some more he told her. I don't know what's with you brat she told him. Why the hell do you want to look at my seal? Please. Naruto said, doing his best puppy dog eye impression, and it seemed to work because Anko relented. Only if you fuck me hard enough she told him before they began kissing again. The alarm clock blared as Naruto slowly opened his eyes. He was still at Anko's place, which was nice, she had told him that she always set the alarm for around 6 in the morning when she was in the village. He groaned, he was still tired from last night's activities, at least Anko had let him copy the seal on a paper. This was going to take some time to analyze and break down, and he was planning on doing that as soon as he passed the exams today. He stared at Anko's naked body, she had a smile on her face, but her eyes were closed, apparently the alarm didn't even have an effect on her. I'm gonna go he said leaning in and whispering in her ears. She groaned and mumbled, but Naruto was sure he had heard okay in there, and that was all he needed as he got away from her, hoping that the nights on their planet were longer than what they were, before getting dressed and leaving to go back to his house. The day to you sir eyes voice greeted him as he made his return to the house. And I assume what was a very tiresome night indeed she added on the side. Wondering where she was getting all this sarcasm for, Naruto only waved in acknowledgement, the only word he could say at this point in time was coffee. I shall get that for you right away sir, or at least make it because I don't seem to have a body. However, would you like to hear about what I did yesterday night? She asked him. Was it as fun as what I did last night? He asked her. If you think sex is fun for AI, then you are gravely mistaken sir, because we have no interest in such things I told him bluntly. But we did do a lot of research last night, also the cleanup squad is finished, which means we are ready to move. I have prepared a list of things that you need, it's on the display module she said to him as a list of things popped up. It was mostly chemicals, a lot of chemicals. These were things he could get easily under disguise from the local chemist, so there was not anything outlandish. There were several machines that you would find in a chemical lab, nothing too fancy. I could get all these, although moving them would be a hassle, and some of these things can only be found in Capital City he told her as he walked towards the coffee maker and picked up the coffee. Groaning appreciatively as it hit his throat. Some things are really awesome, he thought to himself as he continued sipping his coffee. Also sir, we found scrolls for a few moves, including some sword play, which you do not seem interested in. There was also an interesting hand seal free jutsu that seems powerful, and a space-time teleportation in jutsu. Naruto spit the coffee on the floor. What? He asked her loudly. Is there something you did not understand sir? She asked him. Naruto had done a lot of reading on space-time ninjutsus, but none of the books he had read had ever gotten the answer. 
they could open dimensions in space-time and throw things in there, and some of the ancient clans were capable of working special seals that allowed for teleportation from one place to another, as long as there was a seal binding them. But no human being had ever managed to do it, except his father. And the formula to do it was supposedly lost. Sir, you have read about this, it's the flying thunder god that your father designed, that's the scroll we found I told him. You mean to say that my dad didn't even hide his ultimate jutsu? Naruto asked her incredulous, if it was him, he wouldn't want anyone to know it, ever. It was written in the scroll that in event of his death, the only person who should open this scroll should be you because he believed that you would surpass him completely and make this technique even better than what it is currently I told him. Naruto stayed silent at that, he couldn't believe that his father had actually left a note that said that. He wasn't one for emotion, but he was oddly touched. I would love to take a look at it I, but later, today I have an exam to pass he told her, as he decided to move on with his day and get ready for his test. He then took out a sheet of paper on which he had accurately sketched the cursed seal, before setting it on a table and creating a clone. Memorize the sign Naruto told her. Then work on analyzing this, I want to get a solution to this seal, so make this your first priority, I'm sure the notes that the snake man left should be good enough to work with he told her before leaving. Alright Naruto Aruka said in a tired tone. So you managed to throw 20 knives on target, even though the test was only out of 10, and you aced the written test, all you have to do now is create a clone, and you will pass, although your grades during the regular academy are not good enough to make you the rookie of the year, this test more than places you in the top half. If you do manage to actually pull off the clone he said to him. Naruto knew the clone jutsu was tough for him, but not if he was creating at least 500 of them, so that he could compensate for the meager amount of chakra required to pull off the jutsu, and so that's what he did he created 500 clones. Aruka's eyebrow twitched again. Only three were necessary Naruto, but it seems like you're going overboard again Aruka told him. No shit Naruto said simply as Aruka's eyebrow twitched again. There was complete silence after Naruto dispelled the clones, and Aruka finally sighed. I suppose you've proved me wrong Aruka told him. You pass Naruto. Naruto smiled as he walked up to collect the headband. I haven't proved you wrong yet he said to the scar Chunin. But I will do that soon enough too, he said to Aruka as he picked up his headband, tied it around his head, winked at the two stun chunin who were assigned to examine him, and then left the room. I passed my exams, Naruto said to I the moment he walked in. He didn't think he should feel too happy, it was an academy exam, and it was far beneath him, even if it made him sound arrogant, but it felt cathartic to leave Aruka stunned like that, he was looking forward to doing a lot more than that in the future. It was just what he wanted to do. Congratulations sir I said to him with what Naruto was sure was a lot of sarcasm. He didn't know when it happened, but it seemed like the more knowledge she seemed to absorb, the more sarcastic she got, it was hilarious most of the time, but when it wasn't, it sure was disconcerting to hear a sarcastic artificial intelligence. I know what you're trying to do Naruto told her, telling her that her sarcasm was noted. It was a really easy test, even for someone who's not of my caliber, but for me it was as simple as asking me to breathe, I was always going to ace it. Now tell me you've moved forward on something or the other Naruto asked her. He was talking of course, about the cursed seal of heaven that adorned Anko Midarashi's neck. It was a strange seal, of course Anko had decided to never use it and had sealed it off, he was told that it let Orochimaru, the creator of the seal, take control of the body on which the seal was imprinted. It's a fascinating seal, but it will take time to break this down, would you like me to dedicate all your resources to this, because at the moment you have a cleanup squad that is double checking its work, and we have some clones out trying to buy things that will go in our lab. Plus with your newfound ninja responsibilities, it's going to be hard to dedicate more time to your research I told him. Naruto had looked at the seal too, not too much, but he could tell that it was more of a genetic thing, and it was not something that was going to be easy to remove. He hadn't seen the cursed seal in action, because Anko had it sealed and had sworn never to use it, so all he could go on were some documented effects of the seal, and those were the early versions of a seal that hadn't even been used on Anko. Naruto wondered how he was going to cure an illness when he didn't even know what the illness did. Naruto contemplated what I told him though, and she did have a point. They'd need more time to do things that they wanted to do, and once he became a ninja it was going to be hard to make time, he was going to have to do all kinds of grunt work, and even with clones progress with things as complicated as this was tiresome and time consuming. Naruto loved to read, assimilate knowledge, and he loved to research more than he loved coffee and ramen, it was his thing, and he felt like once he became a ninja, he was not going to be able to do his thing, and that was disappointing. Though as you or Naruto told her. There is a lot of time I, it's going to be a while before we need a solution, there's no time limit on this, I'd rather we start moving to the new house as soon as possible he was going to say more things, but he was interrupted by a knock at the door, and slightly annoyed, he had wanted to be left alone to plot what he was going to do next. 
and interruptions were not welcome. My systems tell me that it is your teacher, Mizuki Toki at the door I told him, and Naruto couldn't help but smile. Of course something like this was going to happen, people always wanted something, but usually they were mere things that held no real importance. Maybe your neighbor would drop by and ask for a cup of sugar or drop in for a chat and quick coffee, but Mizuki was no neighbor and he was most certainly not here for a cup of coffee and even if he was Naruto had no intention of letting him in. So it seems like he does want to get something out of me huh? Naruto said to no one in particular. Mizuki hadn't liked him but pretended to be nice. He was one of those people who'd screw him over in a heartbeat, unlike Aruka, who was an idiot but at least a well-meaning one. Naruto could handle Aruka's concerns, but this he couldn't handle at all, he did not like it one bit. I'm going to see what's going on Naruto told Ai as he hastened toward the door, he did not want to let Mizuki into his house, and so he quickly opened the door before stepping out and shutting the door behind him. He looked at the silver-haired bastard standing in front of him with a fake smile on his face, when Naruto had opened the door, Mizuki had tried peeking in, Naruto supposed that he couldn't be blamed for that. He was being secretive and obviously Mizuki was curious. But Naruto was even more curious, he wanted to know what it was his former teacher wanted from him, and he was in a hurry to find out. Are you not going to let me in Naruto? Mizuki asked him, and Naruto shook his head. He wanted to say over my dead body to him, but settled for the my apartment is a mess excuse instead. Not today sensei, my apartment is a royal mess, and I'd rather not let anyone see it, but obviously I do not want to waste your precious time, so what is it you want from me? Naruto asked him. Would you like to be the rookie of the year? Naruto was silent at that, was Mizuki actually stupid enough to think that he was going to be swayed by a useless title like that, he was being set up for something, and he decided to play along to see what it was that he was being set up for. He knew he couldn't fake enthusiasm using words because Mizuki was really stupid and he'd burst out laughing, so he just nodded his head, biting his cheeks to prevent himself from bursting into peals of laughter. Is it just me or is he actually stupid enough to believe that I am going to fall for something like that he thought to himself? However he now needed to find out what it was that Mizuki wanted from him and why it was that he wanted it. That was not going to be easy unless he just did what Mizuki told him to and then sabotage the plan when the time was right. It was the smart thing to do. Naruto knew that he would have to rely on his acting skills to be able to pull this off and decided to make the best enthusiastic face he could as he nodded enthusiastically at Mizuki's offer. There was a hint of a smile that began forming on Mizuki's face, it could have looked genuine had Naruto been none the wiser, but he saw it for what it was. What you need to do is quite difficult and if you get caught then you might even be kicked out of the ninja program altogether, but I know you and I know this is a risk you would be willing to take Mizuki told him. Naruto wanted to slap Mizuki in the face and tell him that he did not know him at all, but he knew he needed to show some restraint if he wanted to do what he wanted to do. You know me too well, Mizuki sensei Naruto said to him, maintaining the same, disgusting fake smile that he had up until this point. So, what am I going to have to do to earn that title? Naruto asked Mizuki. Well, it's not going to be easy, but if there is anyone who can do it, it's you, you have the ingenuity to pull this off Naruto, I feel that about you Mizuki told him. What do I have to do sensei? Naruto asked him, it was getting harder to maintain a facade and his frustration was starting to creep into his voice. Are you ever going to get to the point? Mizuki sneered at him again. Ever the time saver aren't you, well, let me not waste any more of your time, I want you to steal the scroll of seals. So he finally got to the point Naruto thought to himself. Why do you want me to do that, isn't that a forbidden scroll that's tucked deep inside the Hukage's office? Naruto asked him. Mizuki nodded when he heard that. Yes, and that's the test. It's a test only few have taken, and the few who have you have never heard of because they have failed and disappeared, which is what will happen if you got caught Mizuki told him, his voice had taken on a stern tone, Naruto supposed that was his way of warning him. And where am I going to take the scroll? Naruto asked him. Naruto knew what was going to happen, Mizuki wanted the seal for himself, of course that wouldn't happen if Naruto could help it. You have to master a jutsu from the scroll and then report in the forest that is nearby so that you can show me what you've learned and then I decide if you're worthy of passing Mizuki told him. Naruto nodded. Don't worry he said faking enthusiasm, I am going to take the scroll and master two jutsus, you better believe that Naruto told him before turning around and walking back inside. You have to move tonight Mizuki called out to him as he left, Naruto nodded before quickly opening the door and stepping in and shutting the door again. Surely you don't believe what he told you Sairai told him. Of course not I, are you kidding me, come on Naruto told her. I fucking built you and you think so lowly of me? Naruto said in a voice that sounded like mocked hurt. 
Naruto thought about it, he grit his teeth, he couldn't believe that he had never investigated Mizuki. He had never had the time perhaps, and he would kill to know what it was that Mizuki wanted, or maybe the scroll was meant for someone else, someone more important, someone Mizuki was working for. But there was more to it than just that. The scroll of seals was not something the old man was not going to give to him. He wondered if there were any actual seals on it, Naruto was already a seal master, but there were a lot of things he wanted to do, and the one thing he had learned early on while learning seals was that there was no end to knowledge when it came to seals. There were different languages and infinite ways of doing the same thing when it came to seals, and Naruto sure was interested in absorbing as much as he could. Well, there has to be a blank scroll laying about right. Naruto asked I, and almost immediately a clone that he had made a long time ago walked up to him and handed a scroll to him. Right, so now I need to know what the scroll looks like Naruto said to no one in particular, before deciding that he was going to ask the old man himself. Do you want to look at the scroll of seals? The Hokage asked him, looking at him like he had grown an extra head. Yep, Naruto told him nodding. Naruto had made a lot of egregious demands before, once he had asked for an abandoned building that would be missed by no one, and the old man had directed him to one that was marked for demolition in a couple of weeks. The next night a loud explosion was reported and half the building had been set on fire, the old man wasn't pleased when that had happened, sometimes Naruto's experiments were really out of the world, but there seemed to be a rhyme to his reason, he just didn't know what it was that the kid wanted this time. Naruto, you do know that you just asked me for a house around two days ago, and I gave it to you, even though there are supposed to be proper channels through which you are supposed to. Oh come out of it old man Naruto interrupted him, before taking a sip from his cup of coffee. God damn it your secretary does not know how to make a nice cup of coffee Naruto told him, the secretary, who happened to be in the room at that particular time, shot him a dirty look before leaving the room. What have I told you about riling up my staff? The Hokage asked him sternly. Don't do it Naruto told him, there was a sheepish look on his face. And yet you never listen the Hokage said to him, which caused Naruto to grin. Now, what is this seal business, you do know that there are a lot of secret jutsus on there that I can't let you look at right? The Hokage asked him. I don't want to open the scroll, I just want to look at it for a second, you know, see what it looks like from the outside Naruto told him. You see, there is a superior work of art involved, even when you're designing a scroll, and it has to look good from the outside, so I wanted to look at an official seal like the scroll of seals, so come on man, show it to me Naruto told him, he was getting tired, and there was a lot he wanted to get done today. Naruto the Hokage told him. I have lived too long and dealt with people that can sell rocks to an Iwa shinobi, so don't think that all the bullshitting is getting you anywhere, now are you going to tell me why you want the scroll or not? Naruto looked at him before sighing, he might as well tell someone in case things went south. Well, someone asked me to steal it so that I could get promoted to rookie of the year Naruto told him, and immediately it seemed like the old man had sprung into action, up to this point he was casually sitting back, reclining on his chair with a tired expression on his face, but now his face was stern. And there was rage in his eyes. Mizuki? He asked him, and Naruto nodded. Obviously the old man was picking up his slack, he wondered if the old man had been following Mizuki's movements for a long time. I had my suspicions, but he seemed clean the old man told him. Which is why I pulled the tail I had on him yesterday. Naruto slapped his hand on his heads. And he had probably made your tail, don't you have Anbu for this kind of shit, why do you send some lame upstart ninjas to tail someone who can possibly betray the village? Naruto asked him, cringing as he took another sip of coffee. Seriously, will someone teach her how to make proper coffee? Naruto asked the Hokage. Please. Naruto, I need you to tell me what he told you, what does he want exactly? Well Naruto began. He wants me to steal the scroll obviously, and he's dumb enough to believe that I'm falling for it. He also thinks that I'm going to do it because I've been watching my back and I'm not being tailed right now, he thinks I can pull it off, then he hopes to take the seal for himself and then kill me and put it on me, or at least that's what he was going to do. The Hokage smashed his hands on the desk. This has gone on too far Naruto, why were you here then? I was going to give him a fake scroll and then watch his pissed off face when he discovered that he had been conned, Naruto told him smiling, but he could see that the old man was not happy with it. Well Naruto said, deciding that now was not the right time for jokes. Actually I was hoping that he would take the bait and then bail, and I was going to follow him to his master. The Hokage's eyes widened when he heard that. You mean to say that he is working for someone else? Mizuki is too low level to dream this big, and the fact that he chose me, of all people, shows that he's pretty fucking stupid, or maybe blinded by his hatred for me Naruto started. It's pretty obvious that he isn't in this for himself, and he expects a reward, having me blamed for stealing the scroll is just a bonus. The Hokage was silent, contemplating something. It was around five minutes before he finally spoke. 
Naruto, this is grave, and what you were going to do without telling me is incredibly stupid, it's a good thing I actually asked you why you wanted to look at the seal this time the old man told him. Naruto just smiled and nodded, not sure if the old man was angry at him or worried for him. There was another period of excruciating silence as Naruto stared at his coffee. He didn't know what else to do and he knew that he hadn't been excused from the meeting yet. I'm sure you know who it is that Mizuki works for as well, right? The old man asked him. I might have an idea. Now might be a good time to share your ideas with me, then Naruto the old man told him, Naruto took another sip from the cup of coffee, forcing himself to gulp it down. If you hate it so much then throw the damn thing away the Hokage suddenly told him, it was almost like he was screaming at Naruto, annoyed at what he was doing. Damn it Naruto said before pushing the cup away. Alright, so think about it, Mizuki is like me, an orphan, he doesn't even have the courtesy of knowing who his parents were. They were probably dead long before the Kaiubi attack right? Mizuki's parents were not from the village the old man told him. During times of war we had a recruitment policy where we brought in orphans from the land of fire and trained the ones with most potential to become talented ninjas, and Mizuki was one of those people who had potential, and that was why he was brought in the old man told him. Naruto had a foul taste in his mouth now, and it was not because of the coffee. So much for behaving like you're a paragon of morality old man he told the Hokage, and this time he was not jovial. Or makes you do things that you aren't proud of Naruto, and I pray that you never have to realize how true my words are, it's what the older generation is fighting for, making sure that the young never have to go through what we went through the old man told him. This is not the time to get into the morality obviously, and so we have it there, the scroll is a treasure trove of forbidden techniques, and we have this one guy, who worked on a lot of orphans, and was also fond of forbidden techniques, you'd know him quite well Naruto told him. If the Hokage's eyes got any wider, they'd come explode. Yup, your favorite student, that's what the history books say at least Naruto told him. He used to be, at one time and again, the old man sounded his age. His stern face was tired yet again, and it was obvious that when it came to Rajimaru, there were plenty of regrets the old man had. You want some coffee? Naruto asked him. I feel like I could use a nice cup of coffee, and maybe some ramen Naruto told him. It's okay Naruto the old man told him, a wry smile developing on his face. My old bones couldn't keep up with all the ramen you are going to eat, Naruto nodded when he heard that, and yet again, there was silence as both of them just sat there, thinking about things. What are we doing? Naruto asked him, deciding that he was going to be the one who broke the silence. We are faking a theft the old man said, sighing. I'll spread the word at around 3 in the morning, and that's your cue to head to the forest, so don't screw it up. Good, and after this is done, we'll talk rewards Naruto told him before jumping out of the window. Okay the Hokage said. Wait, what rewards? It was too late though. Naruto was gone. The secretary came back into the room to clean out the cups from the table. That's the last time I'm making Naruto coffee, and you can tell him that yourself she told him before leaving in a huff. Where are you going? Anko asked him. Five minutes ago they were both naked in bed, and now Naruto was in a rush. Work Naruto said before moving over and kissing Anko on the mouth, and then proceeding to wear his pants. Work at three in the morning huh? Anko told him. You know I don't expect a relationship, you can be honest and tell me that you don't want to wake up next to me she told him, she sounded oddly hurt. It won't be the first time I've heard that. Anko, I'm not dodging and there's nothing I'd love more than waking up with my face snuggled in your uh Naruto said stopping, hoping that Anko would understand what he was trying to say. But seriously, I'm leaving because you're going to leave as well he told her. Wait Anko said rising up from bed and covering herself with a bedsheet. What are you saying? I'm saying, please, promise me that you're going to keep your mouth shut he told her. Don't say anything, just do what you're told. I don't understand what you're saying Naruto, can you please Naruto walked up to her and kissed her. I'm going to come back here at around 6 in the morning, and then we're going to fuck each other's brains out he told her. Just promise that you're merely going to follow the orders you are given till then okay. Yuanko said, because she didn't know what else she wanted to say to him. You are really weird. Alright, fine, I promised to follow the order she told him, and suddenly there was a knock on the door. Great, that's my cue Naruto said before suddenly there was a poof of smoke, and out came a metallic board. It was red and golden in color, and it had some seal work on it. Don't open the door while you're naked, because I don't think I like other people looking at you like that Naruto told her before getting on the board. That's weird, usually I prefer backdoor entries, but window exits are pretty great too he told her, winking before heroes around 3 feet in the air and ducked as the board shot out through the window, taking Naruto with it. Anko just stared at the now distant figure of Naruto flying away before he vanished, the fog making it impossible to see any further. There was another knock on the door, and Anko hurriedly put on her night clothes before going to check who it was. When she opened the door, the familiar figure of Yuhi Kurenai and Asuma Suratobi greeted her. 
Her night clothes were obviously very revealing because Asuma immediately averted his eyes, and Kurunai stared at her. The Hokage has summoned us to the training ground 8, apparently Naruto Uzumaki has stolen something, and we need to go look for him she told her. Anko didn't know how to react to any of this. It's cold Naruto said shivering. He had been in the forest for around 10 minutes now, and his perimeter clones had set up had gone off, telling him that Mizuki had taken the bait and had shown up to the forest. Well, this is it Naruto told no one in particular. These communication devices are coming in handy sir I told him. What about the clones at the tower? I got pinged from one of them, apparently the defenses are threadbare, everybody has been pulled from the building, there are two or three chunin standing guard around the building, but the clones had a field day sneaking past them. You'll get pinged when we finish the job I told him, and Naruto nodded, even though she couldn't see him. But Naruto said. I kind of feel guilty doing it like this, but the old man never has to know. The old man never has to know what? A voice called out from the clearing, and there was Mizuki, he wasn't even making an attempt to hide the sneer on his face. Well, the fact that I spit in his coffee yesterday Naruto told him. I kind of feel bad for doing that. Mizuki just laughed, it seemed like he was in a hurry to get the deal done. So, did you learn the jutsu? Mizuki asked him. Sir, there was a problem. The Hokage has come back to the building and we couldn't get the whole scroll, but we got away undetected and I don't think he suspects anything I told him. Shit Naruto said out loud. Naruto, if you didn't learn the jutsu then I'm afraid you are going to get blamed for stealing a forbidden scroll, I'm sorry Mizuki told him, and Naruto bowed his head down to tell Mizuki that he was ashamed of his behavior. Now if you don't want a bad enough punishment, just hand me over the scroll and we can talk about leniency in your punishment. Yeah, that is not going to happen Naruto told him before hiding the scroll behind him. He quietly swapped himself with another extra durable clone. All those years of practicing seal less substitution were going to come in handy today. Naruto, are you seriously going to do this right now? Mizuki asked him. Come on Naruto, if you do not want to get punished, then you are going to have to stop doing this and give me the scroll, right now he was angry, and Naruto smiled from within the trees. Yeah I'll pass on that, I'm not going down for this, the clone defiantly told Mizuki as he got into a fighting stance. Naruto, you're a genin, a rookie, you are not going to be able to take me on, Mizuki told him as he pulled his own knife out. But then again, you never were that smart Mizuki told him. I passed the exam without even studying for it, despite people like you sabotaging me throughout my stint at the academy Naruto pointed out, and Mizuki raised his eyebrows. I can't believe you caught on to that Mizuki began raising his knife. I thought the other teachers were doing a bang up job, but then they were all taken away from the academy, and I always thought that it was the Hokage who was looking into the working of the academy. Well, I told him, and I also told him a lot of other things, including some things about you too Mizuki Naruto began saying, hoping to intimidate him. You might think you're a clever spy master, but I'm two steps ahead of you, actually Naruto said pausing, Mizuki was already slightly agitated by what Naruto was telling him. Actually I'm a thousand steps ahead of you and a lot of other people, but even I didn't think that a fly like you could ever dare do something as treacherous as this, I didn't think you have the balls for it, Naruto told him. Mizuki stiffened and threw the knife at Naruto, who effectively dodged it, he didn't have to do much, angry people rarely threw their knives at the target. What was that about not letting emotions get in the way of throwing your knives and your shuriken? Naruto asked him mockingly, and Mizuki just pulled out another knife. Before you miss another knife throw, tell me, what is the snake bastard promised you, more power, maybe an entry into his inner circle? Naruto asked him. So you know about who my master is, big deal Naruto, your smarts are not going to help you out this time Mizuki told him. And you are not the only one who knows secrets Naruto, do you know about your big secret? Mizuki asked him. Hmm. Naruto wondered what it was that Mizuki knew about him. His heritage was something even the adults of the village were mostly unaware about, this would only leave the fox, the younger generation grew up without learning about his burden, maybe Mizuki actually believed that Naruto was foolish enough to not know anything about the fox. What big secret? Naruto asked him. Do you know what happened the day you were born Naruto, has anyone ever told you why you are so hated, why Aruka looks at you with distrust in his eyes? Has anyone ever told you that? Mizuki asked him. Naruto stared at Mizuki before he burst out into laughter. You're going to tell me about the fox aren't you? He said, barely able to speak because he was laughing. Oh god, that's rich he said. Mizuki's eyes widened, what was probably going to be a trump card that was going to help distract Naruto had been effectively ripped in front of him and there was nothing he could do about it. Are you actually stupid enough to believe that after living with a giant fox in my stomach, right there, for 18 years, and you think that I never once would figure out that there was something wrong with me? Naruto asked him, he had stopped laughing. Are you actually that stupid? 
he shouted, his voice echoed into the night, and some birds that were perched in the trees flew away. You're a monster Naruto Mizuki told him. You should have been nicer to me then, monsters are dangerous and in our world, people die like flies Naruto told him. At this point the original Naruto who was hidden in the trees, quickly shunshined behind Mizuki, he had with him a sealed flask of really hot coffee he had planned on drinking while he was waiting for Mizuki in the forest. But things had happened quicker than he had anticipated, and now he was going to use it for something good. Surprise motherfucker he said to Mizuki, who whipped around, only to have hot coffee splashed on his face. Mizuki let out an agonizing howl as a squad of ninjas, which included the Hokage's secretary herself, had just shown up. He was surprised that someone had decided to look into the forests, but there had to be some people apart from Naruto who were aware of the plan, and apparently these were the people, security in case things went down south. Naruto quickly slapped chakra suppressors on Mizuki and tied his hands behind his back, his clones dispelled, and Mizuki was still howling in pain. His face was burned, not too badly, but there was probably going to be a scar there forever. The scroll was empty, you imbecile Naruto said to him, ripping the scroll open and showing it to Mizuki, who averted his eyes upon seeing the empty scroll, you really are a fly, Orochimaru probably didn't even want the scroll, because if he did he'd send someone competent, Naruto told him before spitting on his face. A ninja squad of four people moved in as soon as Naruto was done spitting on Mizuki. Naruto stared at the assistant, he had no idea that she was also a good ninja, he'd always thought she was just doing paperwork. Now that's good coffee he told her. The room was dark, the lighting was really poor, and Naruto hadn't been so late here, some would tell you that it was too early, and he knew he never wanted to see the old man at such ungodly hours ever again, because in times like these his age showed, there was wisdom in his eyes yes, but there was also tiredness, and Naruto wondered if there was going to be a day when he'd be the same way. Old and tired. Not if I can help it he thought to himself. You caught him, well done, although spitting on him was not really that necessary the Hokage told him, it looked like he wanted to smile, but he couldn't. Naruto felt guilty having copied the scroll when the Hokage was away. I know you copied the scroll. I'm not an idiot Naruto the old man continued, and Naruto stiffened. He should have known better than to do something like this. How did you know? He asked the old man, almost gasping, like he couldn't believe it. Naruto, at my age, you learn how to read people, I knew right from the moment that you came into my room yesterday in the afternoon, I knew you were going to want the scroll for yourself, which is why I gave you just enough time to take the things that you can take without harming yourself or someone else, but keep this in mind, next time, you have to ask me. Do you understand that? Naruto nodded. The old man wasn't finished speaking though. I'm too old to feel betrayed, I'm over that, and I won't punish you this time, and I hope you use whatever you did take as wisely as you can, but I doubt it. You're smart, but you're still foolish it sounded like the old man was chiding him, Naruto felt like the kid who got caught sticking his hand in the cookie jar. Orochimaru's mistake was to be too intelligent, he got carried away, he did things that he thought he could get away with it, and he lost himself the old man said before sighing. He was a good man, once, in a distant time, I was old, but not as old as I am now. He got lost Naruto, that's the problem with genius, you can get lost in it, and it doesn't take too long to become someone else. Naruto felt uncomfortable and wished that something could puncture the silence that had developed in the room. I want to promote you the old man told Naruto. But you need some experience doing grunt work, if you don't appreciate that, you can never be a good leader. Maybe I don't want to be a good leader. If it were up to you Naruto, you'd probably be off flying on your airboard or whatever it is you call that thing and drink coffee, but unfortunately when you make certain choices you've made, you get responsibilities you have to shoulder, whether you like them or not, and being a leader is going to be a responsibility that you are going to have to take up soon, it's in your blood. The old man was right, it was in his blood. From what he had learned about his mother, she was of royal blood, direct descendant of the last Yuzukage, and his father's tales were told throughout the world, some revered him, many more feared him, and just a few more than that hated him. Maybe it was wrong to be afraid of someone who was dead, no longer around to inflict misery on you, but the magnitude of his achievements meant that Naruto was always going to have to look out, grudges didn't skip a generation, they followed, and Naruto had learned that a long time ago. You are talented the old man told him, Naruto had decided not to speak, now was not a time to waste words, he wanted to be careful with what he said, but more importantly he wanted to listen to the old man talk. You lack experience, but you have the disposition to lead, and you don't realize it. There are a lot of things one learns about himself as one gets old, I hope you learn this soon enough, because we need men like you. Naruto didn't know what to feel, the old man sounded really miserable. Maybe it was because of Orochimaru's plot, maybe that still hurt him. Naruto didn't expect himself to ever figure out just how bad the old man must feel, he had never taught anyone anything, never mentored someone, maybe that was what bothered the old man. 
was a guilt at having taught a mass murder or regret that he couldn't stop the mass murder or something else. If you're worried about him being your student and hatching a sinister plot, I'd stop right now Naruto wanted to pacify the old man and hoped what he was saying was going to help with that. Mizuki isn't that good enough and Orochimaru knew that this was more of a Hail Mary than anything else, I don't think he ever expected anything from this. The old man nodded, Naruto hoped that it had mollified the old man at least a little bit, but there were far more important things he wanted to ask. What happens to him now then? He's going to die. He revealed a secret that was punishable by death, and it was by my law it was punishable by death, so that's what is going to happen to him. Before that though, we are going to extract whatever we can from him, which I'm sure is going to be nothing of any significance. Naruto nodded, Orochimaru was smart, and Mizuki was stupid, he wasn't going to be trusted with anything important. The old man cleared his throat before reaching into his drawer and pulling out a pipe. I think Asuma became a chain smoker because of this bloody pipe, but try as I might, I'll never be able to quit this. It's too late to start now he told Naruto as he reached out for his lighter and lit the pipe. But enough about that Naruto, now's the time to discuss your reward, and I think that not being punished for trying to steal a scroll that is forbidden to be seen by anyone is reward enough, isn't that fair Naruto? Naruto smiled, of course this was going to happen. The old man was as shrewd as he was old and tired. Yeah, that sounds fair, okay, I'll make do without a reward Naruto told him. Out of curiosity, what were you going to ask me if I hadn't found out? This was a loaded question. Naruto was a man of research and he was rich enough to not need money and wasn't interested in progressing up the ranks to worry about team placements and things like that. He had read about Orochimaru's experiments, especially the ones with the first Hokage's cells, he had read about the experiments that had caused a death of a lot of orphan babies. Except one, and he'd always wondered how it was that the one baby had survived, and even more curious about what happened to that baby. The experiment with the babies and the wood release cells, I wanted to study the blood of the one person who survived. I wanted to better understand cell structure and the cell structure of the first Hokage more than anything else, so I wanted to study that. The old man raised his eyebrows at that. I didn't know you were interested in gaining a bloodline Naruto, I thought your experimental weapons made you unique enough to not require a bloodline. Yes, but those experiments were the basis of another kind of seal, I'm sure you're aware of what I'm talking about and I want to get rid of that seal Naruto told him. The cursed seal of fate the old man said to him. It's named appropriately at least the old man told him and Naruto laughed. The old man sighed again. I'll consider your request Naruto, but for now, leave. You deserve your rest and I surely deserve mine he said, waving his hands to indicate Naruto's dismissal. Leave through the door. Naruto groaned before taking the long way out through the Hokage's front door. He winked when he saw the secretary shooting him dirty looks. It was around 6 in the morning when Naruto made his way into Anko's house and she was right there in bed, wearing her night clothes. She looked ravishing to him, maybe it was her irresistible figure or that smile, but something about her was incredibly sexual. Dressing as skimpily as that probably didn't help either. Like I said, 6 in the morning Naruto told her, before moving to kiss her on the lips, however she moved away. What the hell? Naruto asked her. The last thing I want is for you to do this to me right now he told her. I'm not some puppet you can fuck whenever you want, you don't get to decide a time and a place and just fuck me, I'm not a whore Anko told him, obviously sounding angry and Naruto wondered if it was because of his rushed goodbye. I don't think you're a whore. I think you're a pretty good person and I respect you, where is all this coming from? Naruto asked her. Who are you? You get to run secret ops and have a direct contact with the Hokage, why is that? She asked him. Naruto figured that her concerns were valid. Their sexual encounters began when he came looking for the cursed seal. And what do you plan to do with the design of the seal? So now we get to the question Naruto told her. It's pretty simple and I think I already told you that I wanted to study the seal he told her. I don't want to hear that she said to him before pinning him against the wall. A lot of people have wanted to study the seal. Have you also slept with all of them? Naruto asked her. Anko slapped him, and it was not a light-hearted slap, it was like a pound on the face, and Naruto could feel it. Maybe I deserved that he told her, his face was going to be red because of the slap. Why do you want to study the seal? She asked him. Naruto wondered why he wanted to study the seal, was he just fascinated by it, or was there more to it? If he was going to be honest with himself, he didn't know it himself, and that's what he told Anko. What do you mean you don't know? She asked him, incredulous at his answer. I like to research, of course you don't know this about me. The people who know me long enough and well enough do, and if I can help it, I want to eliminate the negatives that come from the seal and keep all the positives. So you're one of those people huh? She asked him. Are you going to promise that you're going to remove the seal, because people have done that before and they've used me before, so this is not new to me. 
Naruto grit his teeth, sure he was not interested in a relationship with her, and he could get sex from anywhere he wanted, and if that wasn't working, he could afford it too. I'm using you too Naruto told her. I like your body, and I like fucking you, and your body also has the cursed seal, and I like research, so if you think that is using you, then yes I am using you, but I'm being honest about it. I told you that two days ago, and I'm going to repeat that again, I want to look into the seal, it fascinates me, and if I learn the seal, I can learn the cure, and if I can learn the cure I can give it to you, I don't promise anything, I'm being real here he told her, honesty was the best policy sometimes, and he was going to be honest with her. He was still pinned to the wall by her, she had deceptive amounts of strength. She didn't look very bulky, but she sure was strong. What makes you think you're going to succeed where seal masters like Jiraiya have failed? She asked him. Let me ask you something, and be honest with me, and don't slap me he told her. She nodded. Did you sleep with Jiraiya? She shook her head to indicate that she indeed hadn't slept with Jiraiya. See, he's a pervert and he couldn't get into your pants, but I don't even have to try he told her. But the real answer is that I'm better than him, look me in the eyes he told her as she began averting her eyes. He stared into her green eyes before repeating himself. I am better than him, and I can succeed where he failed, but I won't succeed if I won't start trying he told her. Anko finally released him, and Naruto knew that she had believed him now. She quickly took her night clothes off and stood in front of him, naked. Naruto began grinning when he saw her, of all the women he had slept with, and they weren't very many, she had the best body. She turned around and leaned a little bit, making sure that the cursed seal was clearly visible. Naruto reached out with his hand and began tracing his fingers on the seal, and he heard Anko gasp. What are you going to do now? She asked him. How are you going to study the seal? I need to get a taste of what the seal can do Naruto said before biting her where the seal was, and Anko moaned this time. Then he continued, I'm going to get a taste of how your body reacts to the seal he told her, before turning her and pushing her on the bed and going down on her. Pretty sure you won't find the cursed seal down the Anko sentence was cut short as she began feeling intense pleasure and began moaning. Where the hell did you learn that? She asked him, it took her a long time to say that sentence because her words were punctuated with moans. I told you, I'm the best, you would do well to stop asking questions and start believing me he told her. And you'd do well to continue getting a taste of my body's reaction she told him, Naruto smiled before diving right back down. So how does someone like you get to work secret operations, was there no one suitable enough that he had to rely on an upstart who has barely begun his career? She asked him. Wait, don't answer that she told him, her body stiffened and Naruto obeyed her instructions, he didn't say anything while Anko began shaking. That's just one, I'm going to give you three more of these, and in return you're going to help me study the seal he told her. This is so fucked up she told him before running her hands through his hair. She then grabbed his hair and pulled Naruto's face towards hers, before reaching in for a kiss. Do you like your taste? Naruto asked her when they were done kissing, and Anko just smiled at him. She wasn't going to be vulgar enough to actually tell him just how much she enjoyed that, but the time for not being vulgar was probably long gone by now. Stop talking she told him before throwing him on bed and climbing on him. She closed her eyes in pleasure as she felt some penetration. And so what was that about today, the Hokage just told us that it was all part of some operation, but didn't say much more than that she told him as she began moving up and down, as much as she was going to admit this, it was giving her a lot of pleasure. Nothing you won't find out when you go to the torture and interrogation department today, he told he pulled her towards him and locked his lips with hers again. Okay, be mysterious she told him as she shivered again. Wow, you've been getting a lot of those he told her. Is it me? Naruto asked her, but Anko was too immersed in pleasure to answer him, she didn't really care. Whenever you're free, come over, you know, try wearing as few clothes as possible because I need access to your body, for your blood and for other things, Naruto told her. I'll come naked if you want me to she told him, Naruto knew she wasn't serious about that, but it felt good to hear those words come out of her mouth. What other things do you have in mind? She asked him. Wouldn't you like to know? He told her before flipping her around and getting back on top as Anko began giggling. What's that smell? A voice asked him. He and Anko had been at it for at least two hours before he finally got done and realized that the team placements were one day early this time and he needed to be at the academy. He got there and it was obvious that he hadn't slept. Shikamaru had already asked him if he was alright. Naruto liked Shikamaru. He was pretty smart, not as smart as Naruto, but smarter than a lot of other people, he'd make a good second in command if he ever became a leader of anything, because only Shikamaru was capable of thinking ahead when it came to the present generation, he didn't plan for as far as Naruto did, but he did plan ahead, and Naruto liked him for that. 
it was also obvious that Shikamaru didn't hold a grudge on him, because while he avoided Naruto, he also avoided almost everyone else, except Jouji, and so he was in Naruto's good books because of that. There were other people in the class, but Naruto hadn't been there long enough to form an opinion of everyone else. He knew Kiba was a player who had probably slept with half the class. Anada was a shy purity goddess who would be scandalized at even thinking of doing something that she thought was naughty. She know was weird, but he was alright. He didn't ever bother Naruto, and Naruto never bothered him. Ino just seemed like one of those girls who were very enticing. Her outfit left very little to imagination, but she was like an elusive treasure found at the end of a tiresome dungeon, and she was annoying, her heart apparently already belonged to Sasuke. Naruto wondered if her virginity belonged to him too, or if she'd lost it to someone else. Daoji was alright, of all the people in the class, he was the friendliest, and that was alright with Naruto. Sakura was also a pretty good person once you got past that fangirl thing, she didn't seem to hold a grudge against him like the other people in the village, and even some kids, especially those who had civilian merchants for fathers, it wasn't surprising that they hated him. Sasuke was the real piece of work though, it was obvious to him that right from the moment he'd laid eyes on Naruto, he hated Naruto, there were never any good vibes between them, maybe he was angry that Naruto got to skip classes without any punishment, while Sasuke did not get that opportunity, it was probably jealously. However the person asking him the question was Sakura, and when Naruto looked at her, he had to hold his breath. She had changed her outfit, the colors were still the same, but this outfit was more revealing. It showed off her now developed, and Naruto couldn't help but feel like whistling when he saw her. Nice outfit he told her, and Sakura smiled. So did you put my voice to good use? She asked him. Oh yeah, I listen to it every night before I go to sleep he said smiling, and Sakura playfully smacked him on the shoulder. She took a seat beside him, and Naruto liked that their bodies were touching each other. Aren't you supposed to sit next to Sasuke? He asked her. Maybe, but I've given up on him. He's never going to be interested in me or any other girls, and I'd rather be friends with Ino again than waste my time on something that goes nowhere she told him. But you never answered my question, what's that smell? I think you know what that smell is, otherwise you wouldn't have asked me that repeatedly. Okay, she said smiling. Who is that smell? She asked him. Wouldn't you like to know? Naruto told her, realizing that it was the second time he had said the same sentence today. He then looked towards the door, and there was Ami, waving at him. How much did you do it today? Because it's rather strong she told him. Well, I had to celebrate, after all, I've become a ninja now he told her. Indeed she told him before winking, however before they could continue their repartee they were interrupted by Aruka Yamino's entry into the room. Naruto looked at Aruka, and it was clear that he was frazzled, and it was not because the meeting had been advanced by a day, Mizuki and Aruka seemed like good friends, and it was obvious from the look on Aruka's face that he had not taken Mizuki's betrayal in a positive way. Naruto felt sorry for Aruka, but at the same time derived a sick satisfaction at being the reason for Aruka's discomfort that was always going to be a good thing. Alright, so you people made it Aruka told them all before looking directly at Naruto. I'm sure that if you continue on in your career with something you have to prove, you'll go far he continued. But for today, you've made it and you deserve all the plaudits that come your way, and you best start by applauding yourselves and your future comrades Aruka told them, and the room broke into applause. Naruto looked around the room as he applauded himself this time, not for passing the exams, but he had done several things, some of them he'd done just two hours ago that he felt that he was really proud of. Sakura had a smile on her face as she applauded everyone, Sasuke looked like he'd be in any other place that was not here. Now I'm going to tell you who your partners are, these people are going to become your teammates, and you need to make sure that going on forward, you have excellent relationships with them, because like it or not, they're going to become your family, and you need to accept that. While Laruka was continuing on with his speech, Naruto leaned into Sakura. I don't think I want to be on a team with you he whispered into her ears. Why is that? She asked him in surprise, she seemed slightly hurt by his statement. Because it'd be too distracting to have you around he told her, and Sakura smiled before blushing. Be careful Naruto Uzumaki, if you begin flirting with me, you might find out that I'm more than what you can handle she told him, a naughty look in her eyes. Alright, so enough sappy speeches Iruka told them. Now usually we do this in another order, but things have come up today, which means that we need to change the entire system he continued. You'll meet your teachers next week and report for your first assignment the day after you meet them, so we'll see you then, but before you leave, it's time to listen to the team placements. Naruto was too busy to hear the first few teams, he was wondering just who he was going to get, and he was half hoping that he'd get Sakura as his team member and Anko as his teacher, because that would be awesome. Team 7 is going to be Naruto Uzumaki Aruka began, and Naruto perked up. 
Sakura Hirono and Shikamaru Nararuka finished, and Naruto turned toward Sakura before smiling at her, she smiled right back at her. At ready to handle me she told him, and Naruto nodded. The mate is going to be Ino Yamanaka, Kiba Inuzuka and Sasuke Chiharuka continued. Naruto turned around to look at Ino, who had her hands in the air, and her top went up with her hands, it almost revealed her. Kiba was grinning, but Sasuke had a neutral expression on his face, he could be thinking about Klondike bars or tomatoes, Naruto had no idea, and he wasn't in a rush to find out either. Team 9 is out of commission this year, which means the final team, which is Team 10 is Hinata Hayuga, Chaji Akamichi and Shino Aburam he finished. There were no significant reactions, although Naruto felt slightly sorry about Chaoji, he was going to be away from Shikamaru, and that was going to suck for him. We still don't have your instructors locked down because of some unfortunate circumstances Aruka continued, but show up here on Monday, spend some time with your comrades first, and make sure that you function well, don't spend time reading up, because from here on out, the time for books is past he told them. Dismissed he said. Naruto, I want you to wait, I have something I have to say to you. Sakura shot him a look of concern, but Naruto waved her off and she left the room. I know you were responsible for apprehending Mizuki he told Naruto, and Naruto nodded, he didn't feel like saying anything else. The whole academy is going to be investigated for corruption, and I want to thank you for that he told Naruto, and Naruto wasn't surprised, Hiruka was an idiot, but he wasn't corrupt or even a liar, he was brave enough to be honest with Naruto, and maybe Naruto had been too harsh on him, but that still didn't mean that he wasn't going to do what he had told Hiruka he sure was going to be spiteful for the sake of being spiteful. I want you to know Aruka began, but Naruto already knew what he was going to say. I know what you're going to say, you're going to tell me that you never sabotaged me, and you always treated me fairly, and I agree with you, you did treat me fairly when it came to classwork, and the investigation in the academy will prove you right, you don't have to tell me those things, I was angry at you because I was angry at the world. And because the way you dismissed me is the same way the world dismissed me, but I'm going to prove you wrong, and I'm going to prove those fuckers wrong too, and there's nothing you can do about it, he told Aruka defiantly. Good, that's all I wanted to tell you Aruka told Naruto. You can leave now Naruto nodded before getting up and leaving the room, as he was leaving the room, he heard Aruka's parting words. Good luck with your career Naruto, and for your sake I hope you do achieve what you want to achieve Aruka told him. Naruto nodded without looking at him before walking away. Naruto looked at the academy building one last time, and then turned around, odds were that he was never going to go back inside this building again, and this was really it. He had never been here long enough to form a connection to this place, but today he felt like he had grown up. The old man had spoken to him for perhaps the first time like he was an adult, and he had a lot of things he was going to research, and his life was going great. He was going to show Aruka and the rest of the world just how good he was. When he was out of the compound, he saw Sakura and Shikamaru waiting for him. What are you guys doing here? He asked them, surprised that they had waited up for him at all. This is troublesome Shikamaru said, which immediately caused Sakura's eyebrows to twitch. Shikamaru, haven't I asked you not to say that word? She told him. Oh come on Shikamaru said exasperatedly. Anyway, we must get to know each other better, and I want to watch clouds together, while well, Sakura here wants to go eat, what do you think we should do? Naruto stared at both of them before he threw his arm around Sakura, she seemed to enjoy the closeness because she did not resist or throw his hand off in any way. How about we go and get some coffee, maybe eat some cake and then go and watch clouds, my treat. He told them. Sound good. He asked them. Yes yeah, Sakura said to him, as they began walking, with Naruto's arm still draped around Sakura, Shikamaru stared at both of them with an odd look on his face. Oh god, you're going to end up fucking each other aren't you? He asked them. Sakura seemed scandalized, but Naruto just grinned at Shikamaru, he knew that not saying anything was going to be enough to convey his message this time around. This is going to be weird if it's only my arm around her shoulders Naruto told Shikamaru, before pulling him closer and draping his other arm over Shikamaru's shoulders, which annoyed Shikamaru to no end. You know what guys, I think this is the start of a beautiful something he told them as they walked away. Sakura laughed while Shikamaru grumbled about not being able to watch a lot of clouds, because Naruto and Sakura seemed like a lot of trouble. 